All right, guys, let's get this party started, or I guess not started. We already started the party with the last video, which was Turkey Tom's uh, breakdown on uh, Mr. Boogie2988. And now we they had a conversation. So, um, yeah, frankly, the whole Boogie thing, it's like... It's, it's like boring like i'm not in the way of like oh the video was bad or anything but it's like you know but it's just like sad like that's pretty much it like boogie i guess like mr tom said <laughs> mr dark said right tom dark um you get to a point where even his haters aren't tuning in as much and it's just like oh yeah he's not a great guy he kind of smells like poo or something i don't know anyway let's get this going what's up guys it's a conversation Me, your host tom dark back at it again with another video this isn't even a live stream this is just a pre-recorded thing i decided to talk to boogie he asked me to talk to him after my latest video you may have seen a little bit of a drama on twitter maybe i'll pop that at the beginning of this video just for some context but we're gonna go in the studio we're gonna have a conversation with boogie you can see i've got my camera on yeah we're gonna see what, what boogie has to say to me i don't i don't know what he exactly wants to talk about even but yeah i guess we're gonna be going in all right Whoa! Hello, Boogie, two nine eight eight. Are you there? What's he doing? Hey, dude. What's up? What's up, guys... Boogie? How's it going? Hey, man. Nice to actually meet you. I've watched a lot, a lot of your stuff. I know you're not the biggest fan of me, but I have enjoyed a good amount of your content. I don't always agree. Damn, can't do it. <clears throat> what are you doing, Boogie? You're you're instantly submitting to uh, to Tom Dark. Hey, what's up, man? I really love you a lot, but I'm really offended by you painting me in a really negative light. Why would you? I mean, you don't have to be a rude to the guy, but like, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, the, your energy, your energy is very. You have to, you have to align your chakras, your chakras. You need your energy to be proportionate. Prove everything you have to say, everything you do. But uh, I'm excited to actually get a chance to talk to you today, and hopefully, he said, we can... smells like Gouda cheese. I like good cheese too, man. American's my favorite. Talk about like I'm mostly interested in, in talking. About, do you know the premise of this podcast? Like when Keemstar did it and stuff. Uh, no, I don't know. No. Okay, so the idea of it's called Power of the Internet, and it's basically I, we don't have to do this today, but it's what I would like you to do, and then we, we can talk about whatever you want to during it as well. But um, it's just like your rise to fame, how you initially got famous, what you were doing when you got famous, uh, how you got to where you are now, how things are going now for you, any advice you have to people who want to follow in your footsteps and i think in your particular case because you're in the commentary community um and you're critical of people like what advice you would have to people like me who want to avoid your gaze like what is it that uh i've been fucking up that that what you the fuck is this watch bro this is what is this boogie oh, instantly start off with a pl podcast plug and then a plea to what what do i need to do for you to not criticize me <laughs> come on dude this is this is it america she's not discussing shut up shut up you want to avoid Don't and like you i mean much. that that's the premise of the podcast we can do that <laughs> structure nice. if you want to or we can just get into the meat of the criticisms you have about yeah, me i'd really like to start like, a podcast uh, with you uh, uh you know, randomly what makes you feel like you'd be somebody that would <laughs> be good at doing some kind of a podcast <laughs> i don't know maybe it's just me i just bro come on jump I thought, I thought this was like the you had some questions about my video or something. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, definitely. Would love I to wanted to do an impromptu podcast. Uh, come on, man, this is talk about that as well. Like, I would love it if you interviewed sick. me and just talked about all the Why? things you had to say in that video. That's um, it. Okay. I skimmed, I skimmed through it, uh, but yeah, that's the structure we could take today, man. Like, I, I'm mostly just, if I'm being honest with you, I would like somebody to hold me accountable for the stuff I've actually done, and I would like to to bed a lot of the shit oh that I haven't God. done. Like, I was doing a little bit of research last night, and I saw a video that you made claiming that I have like fake Twitter accounts or alt Twitter accounts or something. You you definitely do. You do. No, I don't. I yeah, you do. Don't. yeah, you do. No, yes, I genuinely you do. don't. Yes, you I, do. I mean, like, I won't, I won't disagree that those Twitter accounts are fake, um, but it's not me running them. I, I'm not Boogie, who else, who else will be running those accounts, man? Hey, think. guys, I was doing some research. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you were watching his video. I was doing some research. I don't like that because it, the the weird thing, I don't know, if you're reading between the lines, I guess, is he's like, I was doing some research, and you said I had fake Twitter accounts. Now, maybe Tom Dark has 15 videos about Boogie, and all of them have the same claim, but I'm going to make the reasonable assumption that he's referring to the video that we just watched. <clears throat> So he's trying to make it seem like to me, oh, I did research and I found out this thing, but starting it off with like, oh, I'd like to do this in a podcast kind of framing. It suggested to me that Boogie's trying to almost pretend. I know it sounds weird, but he almost was trying to pretend that like he just randomly wanted to talk to Tom Dark. And then in doing re with no other reason except for, you know, it was, he was just feeling it. He was taking a shit. He's like, you know what I should do? Like he's taking a shit. The lights went out. He's like, this reminds me of Tom Dark. Um, okay. And, um, 
And then he's like, yeah, I was doing some research. The framing is that like he just randomly decided to talk to Tom Dark instead of like actually like you're talking to him because you want to push him on the backlash or whatever. And that's fine. But like, why are you pretending that that's not the truth? It's so bizarre. It's just weird behavior. I have a Kiwi farm of like 500,000 posts. One of those guys, one of the guys who spent like they five would, years. They would just like insult you or call you fat. They wouldn't, they wouldn't do that. I think some of them are smarter than you think they are. But I mean, oh, catfishing shit. happens all the time. I've had two or three catfishing attempts in the world. Damn. So the fact that they're creating female accounts to try to get my attention was not lost on me. And I'm surprised it's lost on you. But like, that's a good one to talk about. Yeah, um, the passive aggressive I nature. Do that, but I but the, the thing is, that. you understand, like part of the reason I believe that it is you is because there's 10 other instances where oh. you like lied. Like the swatting. You lied about being swatted. Well, so no. Okay, yes, you did. You did lie. Of no, I got. What am I supposed to do uh, here? To me, weaponizing welfare checks is the same as swatting. So when somebody mm -hmm. is purposely that's not what I'm talking welfare... about. You know what I'm talking about. Don't play dumb. There was no, a situation which one, which where you were, you you were claiming that Sam and Tolkien was swatting you. No, I just attributed it to the wrong people. But I did. Oh, yeah, where well, I changed the dates around. Yeah, that was a stupid mistake. We'll talk about that. No, no, no. In DMs, you told someone that Sam and Tolkien was swatting you, and then afterwards, what am I supposed you were to like, do it was here? all a big troll op. Actually, I was yeah, passing misinformation. So... <sighs> Here's the truth about yeah, that. I can see and you I'll, in your I'll, head coming up with like things to say as you like look. You're like, mm, I'm gonna make up a new line. Well, no, like, I just what the so, no. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to think before I speak because if I'm not careful, it'll be another one of those sleep, But the thing is, with you, something like this, where I'm just asking you about events that happened, yeah. it's not your opinion. It should just be like, this is what happened. Okay, so but here's it's what never happened. like that. But it's, no, so, but no, so now, now you're doing no, it. But it's never like that with you. No, I know because I'm terrible. My brain doesn't work good. Do you understand that? Do you understand what? Yeah, I do understand that. I do understand. Yes. And so like, I often speak without thinking. I mean, like I'm a slave to my own misfunctioning brain. It's it's saying that I function I as a person. I don't think people realize no, exactly how here. mentally ill I actually am. I don't think wow. you understand. But if I didn't have enablers in my life... Hey guys, I'm mentally ill, but I'm going to come off my meds. I mean, come on, bro. Stop. <clears throat> stop being a, a stinky boy. Like, maybe you are, but I feel like it comes to a point where you're just making excuses for yourself. You know, like, just leaning into it too much. Like, what specifically is the struggle that you have that you feel... Because, like, we're, but nowadays everybody's mentally ill. Oh, I have ADHD, uh, Tourette's, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's life, you know? Life, and I've, I've only had a best friend in the last 25 years video. that helps me keep my shit together. Bills wouldn't get paid. The mortgage, would, like I don't, I don't know how to function. <laughs> it's shit. a fucking miracle I know how to upload to YouTube. It's a fucking miracle that I know I know how to fucking stay alive, man. Um, I'm but, supposed well, to get, we'll get something here. Uh, and I don't so know here, let me do is. a little intro, and then like exactly that. That's exactly what everybody wants to see, right? Um, and bring that same energy. And I, 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 I can only tell you the truth today. Oh, we're still. It's a boogie. We're still in the intro phase, guys. Um. We're still in the intro phase. Are we not oh, recording yet? Are we not recording? No, we're not. We will now, if you're ready. I'm ready. Uh, figure <laughs> out. I'm, sorry, I'm so <laughs> anxious. I forget how to fucking hit record. Right now. Okay, here it is. All right, you You got to be anxious. I'm not. I'm not gonna like lie. I'm not gonna bring Frank Hassel in here. Okay, good. All right. Well, what? The only way he would come in, in anyways, if uh, <laughs> is if you let him. So he's not here. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, somebody told me. I'm not gonna rat out somebody who told me, but somebody told me not to trust you and that like you would arrange some oh, stunts for this <laughs> and like just clown them. You're not interested in an actual interview or anything like that. You were just using this excuse to embarrass me or something. I told him. I thought you were wrong, and I'm glad that they were no. wrong. Um, What's the person's name? Show me a picture. Show me a picture. <laughs> Prove to us that this isn't just like you desperately trying to get him to think that you're like a good, agreeable person. Show me a picture. Who's this person that you're referring to? Huh? Who is it? What are you talking about? It's one of our mutuals. Like, you probably figure out who I'm talking about. But who is it? Tell I'm not going to point a finger or anything. Okay, Why? Uh, all right. Let me hit record. It's one of our mutuals. You can probably figure it out. Why? Why would you say like, okay, so if this actually was somebody that was trying to like uh, warn you uh, well-intentioned, why would you throw them instantaneously under the bus like that? You probably know who they are, but I won't tell you. Why? Like, why would you why would you out that person if they're real? There's no he doesn't look good in any way that you fr but you, you frame this. He looks bad regardless. Again, what's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? B two nine eight eight coming at you. Bro, what is this? What up? What is this? What are you doing? Through the power of the internet, and I have an episode of Power of the Internet that I think is going to be a little. I think that you should have recorded this afterwards because this is like cringe to do live. But okay. Different. I have wanted to talk about my own controversies, my own rise to fame, my introduction to the internet, and the problems that I've had here. And I thought, who He's would be the best person strongholds. to do this? At some point, I thought Keemstar would be a really good choice. Um, but obviously, I've already interviewed Keemstar on here, and I felt like having him interview me would be um probably not that fitting. So this week. Fortuitously, the, the the man, the myth, the legend, Turkey Tom himself, who I think I was trying to count it up last night. I think you've made over a dozen videos about me. So I think you're fairly what well versed this? in the lore, fairly well versed in, in me as a person. Um, so I think like you are probably the right person to ask these questions and have me answer them. Um, and we talked a little bit before I hit the what? record button. I definitely don't know that you're here to hear what I have to say. What, what, where is the, is this released? His, this conversation? Is there another channel that he does? What the fuck is this, dude? <sighs> Okay, incredible stuff. Is there, like, what is he doing? What is happening here? 
Is it, is it on our podcast? Power of the internet. Oh, this is his power of the internet thing. Uh, did he release the conversation with this person? Okay. Power of the internet. Wow. Okay. Uh. Say today as much as like confirming your beliefs, but I promise you, Tom, right here on my dog's life, I will give you all the truth I have. The dog's more. life. Um, I will be as genuine with you in ways that I've never been genuine before because I'm kind of tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, yeah. Like sometimes I just, I don't know. So I have lied, and if we uncover one of those lies today, I'm more than glad to talk about what I lied about and why I lied about it. And I have no intention of lying you, to you today. But just for the people who are tuning in for the first time who are unfamiliar with what you do, I, that's bizarre to me because you are now, the, in my opinion, the largest person in the commentary community. Kind um, of offensive considering you're larger. <laughs> just kidding. That's me. Uh, you're the person I go to more frequently than anybody else. But for those of you who don't know, you can you give them a little bit of introduction about who you are and what you do. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rude because Turkey Times videos are fine. Like I'm not, just, bro. You're like forty something years old, and you're sitting here like trying to jerk off like a 20 year old kid like there's not like listen there's nothing wrong with turkey tom's content but i why does it resonate with you as like a like a, an adult like why is that the, your go-to content and why are you so invested in, in drama like i do it online because you guys like it i just think this is silly stupid goofy stuff and it's funny but like if i wasn't making youtube videos i wouldn't check in like, why are you so obsessed with what's going on in the commentary community and why is your go-to like a young kid that's obviously does well. I'm not shitting on him, but like, why does that resonate with you? And I'm not trying to make any suggestions other than like that's weirdly immature and probably even not even true. You're probably just saying that to make him uh, to try to like jerk him off a little bit. So he's like, oh wow, Biggie likes me. I don't think it's working. <clears throat> it's just weird. Um, I just make videos about Boogie. That's my only interest. Um, well, that's definitely something you have done for sure. But yeah. I think, uh, but yeah, you, I, I would say you talk about a little bit of everything. Um, you definitely talked about YouTube drama for the most part. You've delved into politics a little bit, but not too terribly much. Um, at the beginning of your YouTube career, uh, when, when you began YouTube when you were what fifteen? Is that I was, accurate? I, was, I think I was fourteen. Yeah, I was pretty young. And you're what twenty one now? This is so cringe, right? Yeah. So you're still a baby. Uh, I, I, are there things that when you were fourteen that you did that you regret now? Out of curiosity, like. Uh, what kind of a question is that? Are there? <laughs> this is such a trade wreck. This is so uncomfortable because Boogie's just moving so fast too. Like let's just let's just pretend that it's like a podcast. He's just rapid fire. When you're fourteen, oh, uh, oh you're somewhere you're fifteen. Oh, when we're at that age, are there things that you regret now that you're five years older? Like I would hope so. Uh, it's like rapid fire. Go in here. Do you think you've like learned and grown as a person over the last seven years? Uh, yeah, of course. No, no I don't awesome. think so. This was not on YouTube. But yeah, uh, yeah. I I think that's one of my biggest no, mistakes. Of course, I put everything on YouTube, like too much on YouTube. Yeah. Um, but I, it's been interesting watching you change and grow as a person. Yeah. I had uh, reconnected with you earlier in this week with your content wow. because I was doing the iDubs stuff and like. Guys, I watch you all the time. By the way, this week I reconnected with your content, which means I haven't watched it in a long time. <laughs> bro, come on! You can't even you can't even stay consistent for a minute, bro. I watch you all the time. You're my go-to. By the way, I just reconnected with your content. That's incredible, incredible. What he had to say about it, and I was very interested in hearing what you had to say. And it's it's funny because I largely agreed with your opinion on the IDUB situation, but that I that's a whole other thing. So oh, okay. that's it. What kind of questions do you have for me? Let's start at the very beginning. I know you made a video about me. Why very... wouldn't you push that on that question? If this is supposed to be a podcast, it's not like something that would be relevant to your thing. Um, that what like why, I'm not that I care about the discourse, but it seems to be something you would care about. So why not push him on that? Whatever, I don't care. Recently, where did you start with in that video? What was like the first controversy you talked about? I don't know that there's a ton of questions I have because I feel like I already know <laughs> that you're gonna bullshit me in this interview. I already know what happened. Um, I guess I can like I can like retread the video if you want. Well, there's definitely some things that you were wrong about in that video, and I can point out a few. Okay, well, um, right. but it. I'd rather just start at the beginning. Let, well, let, well, only a few. Wrong. I'd like to start there. Well, so you heavily implied that you did not state that. Uh, some some of the abuse allegations I've made or all of the abuse allegations that I've made are falsified. And that's probably the biggest. To be honest with you, um, I don't know if I agree with that. I obviously wasn't a big fan of Turkey Tom's like Daniel Larson video. It didn't really Carl seem to have... Johnson became a Stop member. giving me money. I'm just kidding. Thank you so much, Carl Johnson. I wasn't a big fan of it. I don't think it quite understands the, uh, you know, the conversation around like people with intellectual disabilities. And so when he brought up the boogie thing, I was actually very surprised about when it came to like his allegations of what happened, where I, he made a pretty good uh, job, I think, did a great job of uh, phrasing or putting it out. Jeez, I can't speak right now. 
I think he did an excellent job with the framing of that situation, questioning it based on the fact that Boogie is incredibly inconsistent, but also like giving him a pretty charitable take and saying like, you know, sometimes people can forget the specific details. Uh, I think he did a decent job in the representation. I don't think that like he, I don't think it was poor representation of the way that he phrased Boogie's like past potential traumatic experiences, considering how inconsistent he was. Uh, it seems like he has a decent understanding of some of the mentality that some people who are survivors of different abuse can go through. So I don't know if I agree with that. The sticking point that I really was frustrated with in the video. Yeah, well, I'm sorry you took it that way, but I don't think you actually think that. I think that if you watch the video, which I don't know if you watched that whole portion. I don't know how much you watched. If you watch, I, video, I watch. I find it very painful to watch these types of videos for me, especially once misinformation is is put out there. And so when I see misinformation, I click it off uh, immediately. I like and that's where I got to with your video, and I mostly skimmed it up to that. There was no misinformation in the video, and if there was, you yeah. have an easy slam dunk of a video being like Turkey Tom lied about me because there's plenty of people that would love to see that. But well, I can't. I can't prove something that happened 30 years ago. The people who did it are dead. They're you know, not. You don't have to prove that it happened. You could just say that it's if you if you genuinely think that I accused you of lying about being molested or something, you could just say he accused me of lying about being molested. That's horrible. I was molested. It was you could just say that and you would look great to the YouTube audience. You would look amazing. Well, but again, that's not what I did I in the think, video. In the video, I, I showed and even you acknowledge this, which is crazy. And it's crazy that you even say yeah, this yeah, right yeah. now. In the video, I'm like, there's a bunch of contradictions. I don't think he lied about abuse, but this was a point when people began to question, you know, maybe he lied about other things. Yeah, and I showed that in the, video. in the video itself, I explicitly state and there was no begging the question. I state, you know, there's no reason to think he lied about the stuff. That would be too insane, even even for Boogie. And I actually have a tweet right here i missed that part so i think that's great i i that, did that, not see you, that part. you're my go-to i didn't watch the whole video come on bro if you, <laughs> if you want to be able to take this podcasting seriously wouldn't have been more productive to watch the whole thing though no. i think you missed it because okay. it was in the replies of your video and you even replied to a clip of it on twitter you replied to someone talking about no it. i don't You're think that tom downplayed you. anything i actually think you, you did said, a pretty good job um, uh, i will give you credit for so. one thing i've been very bad at communicating my history and i don't blame people for doubting it, including yourself that's the best that's thing true, I, people I, have that's true. so that's the thing it's like on one hand you you accuse me of doing something i didn't do and on the other hand you say well if even if you did do that i don't blame you so here's my point of view um <laughs> let's take somebody like uh sean hannity or who's uh the other guy that just recently got fired from fox news tucker yeah like tucker all he does is ask questions but they're very leading questions and i find that a lot of times uh, yes. Okay. So I understand the point he's going to get at, and he's instantly wrong. <sighs> yeah, you can be very suggestive in the way that you phrase questions. Personally, don't think that uh, Turkey Tom did that. I don't think he asked a question in a way that was suggesting. I think that he showed that Boogie uh, claimed abuse. It was very inconsistent about the claims, and then said, "I don't think that he's lying, but some stuff might be off." And so that's that's the message that I think most people got out of it. I don't think that people. You know, you can't you can't play because what he's trying to say is that Turkey Tom uh, uh, rape apologist uh, dog whistled him. That's what he's trying to say in the, in this instance. Stop being silly. When I watch your video essays, they're very leading. You're, you're you won't outright Sometimes, say, but this, this one is wasn't. What I believe, so. But it's pretty apparent that it's what you believe and what you want. Your ah, he's answer. going with the Sunny V two. Was what he's doing. Somebody said that about Sunny V two, which is true about the way that he phrases questions. Um. And now he's trying to compare it to Sony V2. It's just not going to work because I don't think that I don't think that the narrative is fair in this instance. Um, like examples of that, I'm curious. What well, just is. this. It seemed like in this particular case, you're afraid to say I think Boogie's lying, but it seems to be so. I, I, I know you lied. lied not about lie. that. I don't know you lied about that. I'd say okay. you probably told the truth about that. But once again, in the video itself, yeah. I say I don't think he lied. You were you responded on Twitter publicly to a clip where, where, of me saying that I don't think he lied. And now, well, you know, I literally had somebody come out and like this is how that went down on Friday. Somebody, the initial tweet that I saw was uh, Turkey Tom came out and said in the video that you lied. Um, so I was responding to them without watching the video for myself, and okay. that's my mistake. I'm a very well, like, reactionary. Like, why person, you, you know? Yeah, and then you didn't watch the video. <laughs> you even admit that you turned it off basically right when that started. Um, so, come on, man, you're doing you're not doing yourself a favor here. These are these are really the things that are more important than like Boogie's history, right? Like Boogie has like the whole past of being a little goober poopy boy. But your biggest issue isn't like the way that you what you used to do. It's like who are you now? And like you're like you know in this conversation, you're just unreasonable. That's really what it boils down to. Like, that's what it is. Like, that's, to me, I think a significant reason why people don't really tune in is because when they do, they just see this an unreasonable boogie. Just like, you're, you're, you know, you're just, it's just unreasonable. <laughs> that's it. But you do that. Because I'm an idiot. I think you should know that by now. If you're as deep in lore as, as you, you are, you should the... know that I'm a low IQ in the in, uh, individual you're not low IQ, with a though, new, like new intelligent. diverse brain. You're, you're relatively intelligent, but if you have like the mm -hmm. self-awareness to know that's something you do, like you can avoid that behavior. Yeah, it's. I, I don't know if people really know what it's like to be as mentally ill. Do you struggle with anything that you're willing to share today? Obviously, some people want to keep this kind of private stuff private. Right? Have you ever dealt with delusion? Have you ever dealt with no. um, that kind of thing? I, so I have. Yeah, I watch Boogie all the time. <laughs> I don't know. 
uh, the majority of my life. And I think you've seen quite a bit of that on YouTube. And uh, sure, like certainly delusions of grandeur when I was at the top of my YouTube channel. Um, but more talking about delusions of catastrophizing and making things out to be worse than they are in my own brain and genuinely believing it. Like I convinced myself on Friday and was reacting to the reality that you had lied in that video. And all it took was one single tweet. So Eventually. That, right. But you didn't like, look, here's the thing. He might have some kind of a mental health issue associated with this. And I can understand that. Um, this is where you'd have to engage. And I think it's called a like cognitive behavioral therapy, which you seem to be doing by talking to a therapist. So I think that you have a reduced, uh, I think your portrayal hurt, gets hurt a little bit because you see you're supposedly working on this issue and nothing's ever perfect or instant. Um, <clears throat> but you're very aware of your issues that you're having, which is something that's generally rare for people who might have some kind of dealing with some kind of a issue, we'll say. And so I don't think you get as much of an excuse to go off the rails, especially since <coughs> you're doubling down now and you instantly conceded. I don't think that's fair. I think it's a lie. Not his necessarily his mental health issues, but what he just said is that he has the tendency to catastrophize things, which is to basically, I guess, internally sensationalize things. But you thought this up until this point. All of a sudden, you instantly flip. Oh, no, I, I, I just did a bad thing. There's no way that you went through that much prog uh, proce progress instantaneously on this topic because here's what happened. <coughs> Based on the way that Boogie has presented it, Turkey Tom made a video. Um, he brought up the question of his assault um, or his molestation or whatever, right? He, I think he did a pretty sensitive uh, way of, of phrasing it. After that happened, he saw a comment on Twitter that said that he, you know, he said he was lying. Boogie watched the video up until that point and turned it off. In his mind, up until this point, up until this conversation, he believes that Turkey Tom actually did this. Turkey Tom gives him slight pushback and all this. Oh, oh, I guess I was wrong. Yeah, yeah, you know, I actually believed it. I could testify. I, if you truly thought that's what he did, you would have you would have thought that longer, and you instantly phased off it. I, I think that it's like I think that you're very sensitive. I'm sure that you struggle with some things, but like in this instance, I'm I, I honestly just think that you're using it as an excuse, right? Um, I mean, there's there's things that are associated with any mental health uh, condition. Um, you know, I have some of my own, but that doesn't justify bad behavior. You have to be critical of your bad behavior. I just think that you you're I, I think that you're exaggerating it to justify what you're doing you should just watch the full thing or didn't you know so i don't know i don't really i don't really think that uh, i don't really believe i think that if he does have this issue which i wouldn't doubt he's he's weaponizing it to try to get himself out of criticism and it's like at, at what point it's boring S you know stop it responding to this stuff then stop you know what i mean i know it's not that easy but stop responding to it make more whatever videos about diablo or something well is that why you lied about the swatting and stuff? Is that part of the delusion? So that one I, we talked about a little bit. And for those of you who don't know Are what they? he's talking about, and correct me where I'm wrong. During the month, during the year of 2018 and 2019, I got a bunch of weaponized welfare checks. In fact, if you want to see what proof of that, there's body check? cam footage that one of my trolls uploaded to YouTube of a weaponized welfare check happening. But I'm in it. My oh, in it. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking that this guy got money from welfare. <laughs> but now, I, I, now I know what they're talking about. Sorry. Uh, the one that got <laughs> uploaded is I was gone. Uh, but I'm in it. My roommate's in it. My house is in it. My dogs are in it. You can see all of that. And it's one of several incidents that happened that year with weaponized welfare check. Um, and then later that year, I was DMing a uh, one of these guys from the subreddit. And I said to that subreddit that, number one, I thought it was people from that subreddit that was doing that. And number two, that it happened twice in the last so 30 you days. So what you, yeah. you said you had is that you've been SWAT is the terminology. Used. So this is one of my biggest mistakes. Like, for example, uh, when we talked about molestation, my first talk about molestation, I referred to the molestation that I received as, do you remember that? And I referred to it as that because I considered it to be statutory. But somebody okay. quickly educated me that the proper term for what happened to me is not because I wasn't forcibly penetrated. Um, what happened to me was yes. molestation. And so I had to change my story to say it was molestation, right? I um, think that mol was, is, does molestation not fall under the categorization of rape? I don't understand. Okay, whatever. And this is one of those cases where I have now learned to refer to it as weaponized welfare checks because that's what it is specifically. Okay, but so what doesn't make sense about what you're saying is that after that, after all the drama was done and you got and you got caught for lying about swatting, you claimed that you had intentionally fed them misinformation. I did. I did. I, I changed those dates on purpose. I knew for a fact that I had received several weaponized welfare checks in the previous years. And I wanted them, because I knew how they worked, I knew they would look at the police blotters. I wanted them to prove that they had happened. And I knew that they would be like, no, he didn't get swatted on these dates. He got swatted on these different dates. And okay, so one I, option then. I thought it was a you, mastermind move. So, I thought I was being smart. It turns out to be a very stupid thing. To yeah, so, so you understand? So one option is that you like lied pathologically. Sure, I which did. I, think yeah, I definitely and, and, the, and the other option is that um, I wouldn't categorize it as pathological based on the way that Boogie said it. The fact that he conceded to that is bizarre. 
Or just like, yeah, yeah, that might be. Why would that? Wouldn't your argument isn't that you lied pathologically, Boogie? Your argument is that you did it to, to be methodical to try to expose somebody. So why would you instantly accept like yeah, that is a pathological lie? <laughs> it doesn't really make sense to me, but okay. You lied to make yourself look worse. Well, what do you think I lied about? First off, I didn't lie about the weaponized welfare check. They happened. You lied about having a secret department. deal with the police department during which they would not uh, yeah. keep records. Yeah, um, that was a very stupid thing. But the thing is, yeah. like, that's you say yeah, that's a very, very stupid, stupid thing, thing, but that ties into the whole thing. That ties into the whole situation. Of course it does. I, I was again. I thought I was playing 4D chess. It was. I was delusional. I thought I was playing 4D chess, and I'm like, I thought that I was delusional. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. No. I'm gonna get these sons of just to prove that they've actually swatted me. They're gonna admit it. I thought I was playing 4D chess. No, I was just making an ass out of myself. I was just being a fucking idiot. But I, th I hope that shows you to the, the depths of, of delusion that I deal with from time to time. I genuinely thought that was going to play out in my favor. I thought that they would, pr and they did. They proved that I'd been swatted several times, welfare checked, weaponized welfare checked several times that year. They proved it and said, look, he's wrong about the dates. He changed the dates. He lied. He lied. Um, nobody gave a shit. Nobody gave a shit that somebody was weaponized, weaponizing welfare checks, wasting the time of both the police and the, the rescue squads and the fire department. So because they all show up during the welfare, welfare checks. checks. I don't know. I presume it's Kiwi Farm. I presume Do you have any suspicion that maybe because of your threats of suicide, someone made a legitimate welfare check to your house? No, because they weren't vocal at that time. This was early of 2018. Uh, I mean, that's quite possible. He's very. I, I mean, maybe he's right. Maybe it wasn't. He wasn't vocal at the time, but he's very vocal about it. So that is quite possible. That's when the first one happened. So no, it wasn't until a DM in 2018. Wasn't it VidCon 2018 that you? Um, no, it was 2019. Um, and it was 2019? these. Yeah, it was 2019. But yeah, for those of you who don't know, I went around. I went to. I had the intention of killing myself on my birthday of, of uh, July 24th, 2019. Stuff, and VidCon happened to be just stuff. before that. So I recorded like uh, a last Francis video and got it produced and it was Francis covering my way and I planned to upload that as like my goodbye, you know? And uh, then I went to VidCon, but here's the thing, Tom, I didn't really want to die. I just wanted to not be in constant mental and physical pain all the time. And I want- It's possible, uh, maybe. It's also possible that you were looking for a little bit of attention. I'm not saying that that is what it is, absolutely, but um, yeah. I wanted to I not know. be suffering the way I, I was I, suffering. I, so I, I went to VidCon. Uh, yes, I saw the Advent Preach video. It's going to be uploaded after the stream's over. Uh, you know, maybe I'm just being cynical. But... And I talk to every person there, and I'm like, how do I fix this problem? I've got like 4,000 people on a subreddit every day who take my words out of context, who take the, and, and like astroturf it to every potential subreddit they can until it gets voted up. I make the front page of Reddit over and over again, sometimes for hey, legitimate famous. mistakes, but also with like bullshit things like I abuse women or I abused my ex-wife, and that sh with me super bad and like how do i solve this problem because if i don't solve this problem i'm going home and fucking killing myself okay so uh, i think the way to solve the problem is to make the uh claim that we should put people in jail if they misgender people that is definitely solving that problem that's what you should do so I, know, horribly. I, I sympathize well, with you the sam and tolki thread was not amazing yeah the other thing is that like every youtuber deals with stuff like that i'm and just it, not equipped for it i, I i'm glad that you're i don't think that. every youtuber deals with that to the same proportionality uh, boogie's a special case <laughs> He gets uh, hit a little harder. You could argue it's deserved, but it's still true. I, I've never been equipped for that. Uh, kind of thing. Um, I don't know how to deal with it. And I would say that I got it at a considerably higher level than most. I think yeah, there are definitely well, people why do you that, think like, you wins. got it at a higher level. Because my are subreddit had the largest numbers for the most part. Oh, you mean like at random? I think part of it is uh, my weight. I think uh, I'm Maybe. extremely fat and a lot of people have issues with that. I think a lot of it is because... Listen, it's possible that your weight's a factor, but honestly... You're fu you talk about it just before that you were constantly going off on these delusional escapades or however you want to phrase it. So, like, you think that maybe it's more of that? Because, listen, absolutely, like, people don't like fat people. How's your percent? Um, but honestly, man, with everything else going on, it's again, it sounds more like a, a bit of a victim mentality, you know, than anything else in that case. Oh, I think it's because I'm fat. You don't, you don't think it's because you lie a lot? No? No, oh, it's just fat. But the problem is, is he stores up so much lies in his fan. Just like me, I do the same thing. It's part of our condition, guys. Uh, it just seems like silly to say. Because I'm such an incredible <clears throat> lol cow. I respond to everybody. I respond to everything. I find it extremely difficult to not... Re I mean, hell, I'm doing this interview with you. Uh, and this Twitter. is probably career suicide, right? Uh, but I'm going to do it anyway because I hope it helps and entertains No, it's not going to be the end of your career. Like, nobody's going to care. Um, <clears throat> this is just, like, what's expected of you. You know, kind of a thing. This could have been a, a revitalization if you didn't come in here, like, so unhinged. So, uh, hates people. And also, even though I know it's a bad idea, I'm incapable of stopping myself. Like, several people have told me not to do this. Um, and on top of that, I've definitely made some 
stupid mistakes and said some really what? stupid shit. I seriously shit. don't understand why you're doing it. You have no benefit to talking to me. Um, there's three reasons, really. Uh, this Let's is how I justified it. it. Oh, one second, my puppy needs it. Um, here's how I justified it in my mind. Hopefully it can give you an idea of my delusions. Number one, in my mind, I, I like this. It's not a delusion. You know that it's bad for you. There's no delusion going on here. Like, you can't keep saying it's some kind of a delusion. You, if you're you're self aware, you're aware of what you think or what the, the idea of if it's going to happen. You're aware that's not good for you to be doing this, this entire thing. It's not a delusion at this point. You're just making a bad decision, and you're just you're saying that it's a mental health issue when it's just you're you're it's you're making a bad decision, just like you make bad decisions on your financial investments. Like you're just making a bad decision, and you need to justify it by like, oh, well, I have a mental health issue. It's like, oh, probably, but like you know, this isn't a delusion. You're just being. You're making a bad choice. Bad choices aren't delusions. You just made a bad choice, and you're continuing to make it, even though you know it's a bad choice. Shut the fuck up. Perky you know? Tom, I don't like everything you've done. I don't like everything you said. Same with same thing I said about iDubs. Same thing I'll say about Ethan Klein. Same thing I'll say about everybody. But there are parts about your content that I like, and I think I like, like you what? as a person for the most part. Why? Um, though well, I don't like, know you like, that well, like right? The other day you, you called know. me like a racist on Twitter. You claimed that I lied. Oh yeah, you definitely said some racist shit, and you uh, yeah. But you but, have to. So here's <laughs> one of my worst issues. Uh, the worst a person treats me, the more I want to uh, convince them they're wrong. Why I'm wired like that, I don't know. It's really weird. It's the same reason I befriended Keemstar. That's why I, so I why went to London and risked my life. Because you said racist. It was racist. But you said racist stuff, too. Yeah, but I think you said in that one set of screenshots more racist shit than I've said in the last 20 That's years. That's definitely not true. Uh, I said, I made a joke about people of color being broke because I thought historically people in color, uh, people of color in this nation have not been given an opportunity to build wealth. And I thought people uh, would get that joke. Yeah, that's, I made another... that's really why you were saying that or just because you thought it was a funny racist joke, Boogie. There was a great, <laughs> that's what like, was going... there was a so great you... joke about like institutionalized oppression. And, so do you know the history? Do you know the history of that moment? My face went white lip. Bro, yeah, I love making jokes, uh, but the point of it is to just tell you guys it's because racism exists. I don't know. If, I, <laughs> I like to make edgy jokes sometimes in the middle of doing social advocation, but it doesn't benefit the social advocation. I'm just a little bit of a, a silly goose that likes edgier jokes. Um, but to say that the joke in and of itself was to be advocating is very interesting. It's very interesting moment uh, other than the clip do you know the context of that clip out of curiosity I so i so. have i have a friend named Kelsey, um who would oh, donate grammar. to my live stream every time i live stream five nights a week almost Damn. and he had a username called sparkle dump and he would always donate with the message i'm a black person and i would try to riff on that every time and Why? like the first time he did it i said so you made a like, joke so you made a joke yeah. this is yeah, this so context black doesn't change anything so when they did that and you said like hey that's not a, 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 a that's a, a little bit of an insensitive name or something what would you say i don't or that's insensitive. I'm not saying you're right. racist. I'm saying you Stay made a joke. I'm saying it's ridiculous for you to call me racist. When I have people from other boogie accounts combing through your old internet to find you saying even are more you racist, racist? Stuff that's about not black a girls. curiosity. Are you racist? Am I racist? I'm very yeah. Like, racist. do you dislike people of color? No. Do you do you think less of people of color? No. Do you think less of Jewish people? No. Why do you feel comfortable making those jokes? Because I've made maybe four of those jokes. In <laughs> this is just stupid. First of all, you don't have to be hateful of anybody to be a little bit racist. I think that like anytime you make a bigoted joke, it's a little racist. You could argue somebody's a little racist. I make big, I make some like fun jokes. I make them about everybody, and they, they're definitely. I think the intentionality matters because like people, you're watching like a half hour, hour, two hour long video. I make like a little five second joke, and I'll usually say I'm just kidding because I don't want people to get the wrong impression. Because I just enjoy edgy humor. But you could argue that that's racist, and that's fine. But like, do you? If anything, whatever, I don't know what racism Turkey Tom jokes are engaging in. Like, these commentary community kids can be very edgy. As possible. There's probably some form of, like, a little more passive racism where, like, they're not hateful, but they say some ignorant ass shit. <clears throat> what the fuck was I going to say? <laughs> But oh, I don't think it's fair to say that they're that they're he's racist in this like hateful way. It's just like he's edgy and probably sheltered online uh, in a space where there's not like a whole lot of uh, POCs, you know, pieces of crap. <laughs> no, just kidding. But people, of color. that's one of the examples of the ridiculous jokes I make. Um, <clears throat> people of color. So that's probably it. That's a lot of that space. You know, probably should be a little bit uh, aware of that though, and not go too crazy. You know what I mean? So, but hey. In 20 years, and I feel very no, uncomfortable having made them. No, you no, I have. You, you can count them. Dude, you claim to, you claim to be a 4chan guy. You went on fucking the beta podcast. You were like, I said f this, f that. Whoa. Actually, I will tell you. So let's be honest about that. Um, slurs, I'm dude. That. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so I grew up on Sam Kinison, Lenny Bruce. I still watch Louis C.K., Dave Chappelle to this day. I watch okay. you. I watched old school I Okay, so you understand. I, People like I to make consume. jokes. Are you, yeah, you're comparing him and iDubs to like Louis C.K. and Dave Chappelle? I just feel <laughs> That's just weird. Why? Why? I'm just I'm confused. And you don't watch him. Stop pretending that you that you watch this guy like Turkey Tom. You don't. You didn't even finish one of his videos, and you said I had to revisit your content. You don't watch him. Stop lying. It's so weird. Like, 
It's not pretending you're a fan. It's it's just a bizarre tactic. Of course. So why so the f are you mad at me for shit I said in private on Discord, Boogie? I I just thought you called me racist in that video, so calling you racist. I didn't call you racist. I'm racist. Did you not bring up like old racist clips in that no, video or something no, like that? No. no. Well, okay. Well, that's why. <laughs> Wait. What this guy? <laughs> <laughs> you look so fucking silly, dude. What are you doing? You're like a little pickle head, bro. You called me racist in the video, bro. You know we did it. You didn't even watch it. What are you doing? How much of it did you get? It's only an hour. Watch it at 50% increased speed. You didn't mention that anything like that at all. It's actually a pretty charitable take, in my opinion. Uh, at least compared to the other shit that people have said about you. Bro, come on. He's going off about this racism shit when they didn't even call him racist. It's fucking embarrassing for you. What the fuck? See, again, I'm functioning on my limited capacity of no. brain power. You I know you're not, dude. You just didn't watch the video a minute before. It's nothing to do with brain power. Use it as a fucking excuse. It's pathetic, dude. Stop. Stop pretending. Oh, my God. Oh, get off the internet, then? Probably not. It's my only income. I'm a disabled man. I don't really know what I else I could possibly do to earn a living. So this is the only thing I feel like I, I mean, can. You, you could, like, get, like, an IT job or something, like, normal. I'm not qualified for it, and I definitely don't have the mental health to hold down a job. I've tried. I sure. don't have the uh, I barely I function as a YouTuber, and this is one of the easiest jobs I think there is to have. You so can you, you imagine? Like, improve your life in some way? Like, you're totally defeatist about this. You could, like, I don't know, go to the gym. Oh, I go to the gym. I'm, you know, I just joined a new gym this last week. Mm. Uh, the problem is, I don't know if you know. Have you ever been morbidly obese, Tom? I don't know. I imagine you have not had any weight issues. No. Okay. Uh, if you've never been morbidly obese, you may not know this, but the majority uh, of weight yeah. loss has very little to do with exercise, mostly about controlling your diet. Um, and, sure. yeah, so do that. and that's where, again, I don't think people understand my level of addiction, my level of mental illness. Um, I have a lot of trouble controlling the things I do. I have a lot of but trouble these are controlling things that you the can, things you I do. You can overcome. You don't just have to accept them for what they are. Like, they are right. hard to overcome. I just have like no sympathy left for this guy in this because we're fucking 22 minutes in and it's already like such a, like a crybaby festival. Oh my God. And so I work on them every day. I'm in therapy again right now. Uh, I just got back into it after this fight because I knew I was going to need it. Therapy is clearly not enough. Like you're, you're like my dad's age, and you're totally defeatist about this. Yeah. But did your dad go through the things that I went through? Do you think? You know, probably, because probably you go not, through them. Yeah. I don't know. And so I think that's one of the biggest issues. Yeah, is my brain is like a, a jumbled more. wire of just it's just a fucking mess, man. And it's difficult yeah, to crazy. function. But you know this. You know this about yeah. yourself. Yeah. And I think I do a pretty goddamn good job. I think someone with my experiences, with my body, still being alive at 48, that alone is a triumph. So many people that I loved and respected that have been my size have already died by the time they're this age. John. Candy, Ralphie May, so many incredibly much more intelligent and talented people than I ever was, right? I've outlived them all, and that sucks. Doesn't that because give you the inspiration, though? Like, you could change your lifestyle, change your diet. I, but I have. Like, I've lost 200 pounds in the last five years and kept it off, and I'm really proud of that. Oh, I've gotten therapy. I've done psychedelics. I'm communicating with you here. Why is doing psychedelics like a positive? You've done psychedelics. Is that supposed to be like, oh my God, praise the Lord? That's, that's the right way to go. Okay. I have the intelligence and the capacity to be able to sit down and have this conversation with you. And I think I, I love it. I have, I've been really well. I have the intelligence and the intelligence and capacity to sit down and have a this conversation with you. By the way, though, I'm a delusional. My brain's only working at half capacity. Come on, bro. Stop. It's like embarrassing yourself at this point. <clears throat> Just sound like an issue of pride. You know, like why are you making so many excuses for yourself? It's crazy. Like, I get it's hard to lose weight. I'm not saying lose all your weight, but like just every everything you have an answer to why like nothing is your fault. Jesus I Christ. think it's pretty damn cool. I'm actually really proud of what I've accomplished. I, I think it's insane oh. that I was able to be on the internet for 20 years. I think it's insane that I was able to entertain people for as long as I have. I think it's insane That's that I've crazy, earned a billion right? views on the platform. Whoa. And people were uh, either entertained or inspired by that. And uh, I'm actually really proud of that. And so I think there's okay. two different ways to look at it. I can look at my life, as a lot of people think I do. Oh, poor oh, pity me. I'm just going to sit on my do. ass and not try to do anything. And That's not what try you to do, bro. What I can do what I do every about? day, which is try to control what I eat, try to control this brain, try to control this body, see my doctor, hit the gym, make a YouTube. YouTube content, live stream, interview Tom Dark, and I'm actually really proud that I well, choose. It is like to I mean, that. you were offered a job at Meta PCs, and well, no, I wasn't. That was a bit. You know, that was a bit. Like ask Zach right, Zach right now. I was never offered a job. That was a bit. I um, they sponsored. They're one of my sponsors. No, it was definitely a bit. It's another one of those L's that you guys have to take because Zach will tell you right now Wait, because you guys are so convinced. I lied about that one too. I just asked you. Oh, okay, well, so many people are. You might not have been. You might not have been convinced that it was an actual offer, and you might have just been trolling. I, mean, I thought. Some people I, I thought it might have been. I was curious. Well, it wasn't. It was a bit. It was a. Uh, they have been a sponsor of mine for now for two years, and we were just trying to sell PCs. Uh, wow. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know for a fact, and I think anybody who's watched me on YouTube would know for a fact, I'm pretty much unhirable, man. I don't know. I don't know. What, what job can you break down in tears in the middle of? What job can... A uh, librarian. You can do that. Librarian. If you're so proud of your life, then why... Then why? I, I, I just don't... I'm not convinced. I'm just not convinced. If it was anybody else, I probably would be. But just knowing how much I know, I just don't think that you have... I don't think that you do that. Sorry. It's the way that you talk about everything, bro. Holy fuck. This is, what was me? Well, everything's woe is me. It was an excuse. And then you're talking about how proud of yourself you are. Okay, so where are your issues coming from? Like, it doesn't it doesn't really add up too much to me. I don't know. I think it's just a bunch of... I just think it's a reaction to anything that somebody says. He just has to have an answer that makes him, frames him in the best possible light.
best can possible you show way. up and not be able to stand up for more than three okay. days. Well, let's talk about right. YouTube then. Have you thought about changing your content? Because clearly, this, whatever you're doing right now is not really getting the numbers, right? Well, so I did a shift after um, I did a shift. I, I like vlogging, and I haven't been doing much of it. So uh, my friend Michael, kid behind the camera, took me under his wing, and we made some vlogs, and they did pretty well. Um, and so I'm trying to mm -hmm. learn to do he does and without all the clickbaiting and all of that stuff. And uh, okay. I also really like travel content. So I actually made the announcement today on on Twitter that I think what I'm going to do with this fight money when it comes in is invest in uh, getting out there more, doing more, and filming those experiences. More because people seem Ethereum to be enjoying point. it. Somebody on my comment thread called it comfy content, and I like it. But here's the thing. I will never be able to compete with the likes of you. Um, the you amount could. of editing, I don't, I don't. I don't have the skill or the talent, I, I, nor the patience, what, nor the time. What I have isn't skill or talent. Like, I just put the time in. Yeah. yeah like, so, uh, some editing isn't that <gasps> difficult to do. It takes time, but it's not, like, that hard to do, like, a lot of editing um, work. It's somewhat self-explanatory. Um... You know, like, like wonder, I use like Wondershare Filmora. Throw the video in there. You know? It's not like crazy. Throw some pictures or overlays. The bigger issue is the uh or the bigger difficulty is the is the script, no? It's the script that people will put a lot of work into. That's like the more difficult aspect of it. So you know, a boogie vlog content doesn't require a script though, it just requires the editing, so you don't really have to worry about that too much. I, I spend so much time in my day seeing doctors, trying no, to control don't. this brain, trying to control no, this body, don't. trying to control these no, motions. No, you don't. Stop fucking lying. Just shut the fuck up. And in fact, the biggest problem with this is, is he's like, I can't do the editing because I'm, I'm just so fucking inept. The editing would help you. You need to motivate yourself and move a little more and do a little more. So, like, you're just sitting there apparently all day sitting in bed and perseverating about, like, how fucking terrible your life is when what you need to do is get up and do a little bit of work that would take your mind off of some of the negatives in your in your, in your your head. So you're just making excuses. And if this is something that's real, your therapist told you this already, so you know uh, you know this. You know that you need to be a little bit more proactive in your, um, in your growth as a person, in your change. So you're, you're just like lying. You can video edit. You can do the video editing. It's not that difficult. And it's not like you're on stream like for 10 hours a day like other content creators. You're barely on, you're barely doing anything. So you have the time to do this. What are you talking about? Questions. I don't have, how, you made an hour long video about me. Out of curiosity, how many hours do you think that took you? And I presume you have an editor. So you and your editor, editing, filming, scripting, writing, research. How many hours do you think that took you? That one You're day? not doing um, that. Combined, I don't know, a lot, like 50 maybe. 50 hours? That's insane. I, I, that I don't have the, the patience. I, I, my current therapist thinks I'm dealing with ADHD. I don't know if I am or not. So, oh my God. Your current therapist thinks you're dealing? Dude, shut the fuck up. This is like an insanely hard fight for some reason. I don't understand it. Um... They think you're dealing with it. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Bro, just stop. Uh, this is like embarrassing at this point for yourself. Just stop. Like, I don't even think you have a therapist anymore. I'm going to fucking die. These are insanely difficult. What the fuck is happening here? Um. Wow, incredible. I'm going to die here. Wait. Oh, sorry. Uh. Not. Um, I don't know that I'll ever get tested for it, but I do know that my brain works very similar to that. I have difficulty setting and doing anything for an hour. I have difficulty setting for an hour because of my back pain, much less setting in a chair so or something. Has, has thinking about in the hour and a half conversation that he has this stuff um, throughout your life has it helped you a lot? What do you mean, like therapy or like talking about the stuff? Or exactly well, what do you mean? Well, no. What, what I was talking <laughs> like to you I have like... actual diagnosed ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> um, you need to learn to manage it. I, I don't, again, there's like cognitive behavioral therapy that you need to engage in. You have a therapist. He's acting like there's nothing that can be done to, to change his situation. It's just pathetic. Like, well, I don't have time um, to do what you do. And I say, well, how is that? You say, well, I have to see doctors, I have to see a therapist, and then I have to spend time controlling this brain or controlling this body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? So when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing you do? Probably piss. And then? Um, Shit. Shower? Well, I piss and shower. Uh, and then I spend I the first two or three either. hours of my day trying to not hate being alive, trying to get myself okay. out of physical pain, trying to get myself out of mental pain so that I can put on a smile for my friends, for my audience, for the people that care, for the people at the gas station when I go get gas or at the pharmacy when I go get my meds. But, but is to, that time, I, like, ruminating on that every like change your life for the better yes because otherwise i will uh you know not to be super skeptical i'm being very skeptical of this whole entire situation just with everything considered but i if <laughs> if you are engaging in this much which basically depression my i would just assume you're not getting out of bed you're just staying in bed you're not getting up pissing and showering you're just in bed all day unable to get up and to shower because that's what happens for a lot of people is they they aren't able to, to, to break past the very basic barriers of waking up uh in the morning uh, getting out of bed 
all that other stuff. I'm not saying he's lying, but based on everything he's saying, it's just so hard to like take any of these things that he says as like any level of like truth. Um, so you get up, you shower, you get up, you piss, and you shower. You're up. You you've done actually significant work for somebody who is seemingly the way that you've represented your shit is that you're clinically fucking depressed. And then you just can't function after that? I just don't think I believe that. I think you're lazy. Profoundly lazy. And you don't want to do editing um, at all. Like, you, you, you're, you're con a vlogging content isn't... There's no script. You just go vlog and then you edit. Like, it's pretty easy. Like, I made, like, a TikTok on my phone of, like, my wife's stuff in our podcast. Um, I thought it was pretty funny. It was a Squishmallow thing. But Whatever. Make it similar to the catastrophic mistakes I've made on YouTube. I'll make those catastrophic mistakes at the gas station, at the pharmacy with a friend. Uh, I have to spend that time meditating. What do you trauma dump on the fucking attendant at the gas station? Is that one of your catastrophic mistakes? Like, what do you do? I mean, for all lack of a better term, meditating and learning to get my brain into a functioning mode. It takes effort. It it's takes not just meditating, bro. You're not like a fucking. What are you talking about? The getting your brain to a functioning mode would be you sitting down actively trying to do these other things. Then that would be that would be what your therapist would tell you to do. Is like, oh, why don't you get up and start doing this thing? You know, just find the motivation to start. Have an independent space that's for this. Why am, I, why am I doing this? Why am I taking this guy out? Whatever. I don't know why. It's time. It sucks, but this that's what it is. I have, you know what? I I got up today at 10 a.m. Do you know wow. what I've done today? I've done nothing but prepare for this interview so that I would not lose my uh, emotions. I wouldn't cry in front of you. I wouldn't lose my temper in front okay, of you. Sure. I have literally played a handful of okay. video games. I talked to my girlfriend. I played. I've done dogs. nothing but prepare. Also, I played with my dogs. I played video games. Talked to my girlfriend. It sounds like what you did was called procrastinating. <laughs> oh, we you know, I woke up and all I did was procrastinate. What, what? <laughs> it's my ritual to play fucking video games every day. Like, I understand video games can be very cathartic, but shut the fuck up. You're procrastinating doing any real work, and you're phrasing it as if, like, you're, this is this is the process. My doctor prescribed me uh, six hours of fucking Diablo 4 every single day. That's part of my process. It's like, get the fuck out of here. I did all of these things so that I would be in the right headspace okay. for this interview so I wouldn't make a complete and utter ass out of myself. And that's, yeah, you already did. I, I, you know, I would spend the rest in. of this night ruminating over what we talked about here, beating myself up and trying not to wow. have a meltdown on Twitter because that's just how my brain works. I feel works like for your girlfriend. I, deal with you, huh? I don't know why it is the way that it is, but that's the brain I, am. I live in. You know, it sucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so to go back to some of the things that I've lied about in the past you so one of the things i wanted to bring up oh, um unpacked. you are convinced and you made a video and we talked about this prior that i have alt accounts on twitter and i pretend to like like my own tweets or pretend to be a girl that likes me or something like that i skimmed through the video so I don't, I, I don't know if you do right now but you did no i don't i never did and it's so interesting because no I did. It, they were doing it so badly <laughs> why would i continue to do it the first time i got called out if i was doing it and why well, would i do it well, so badly why, why would you, i do it you all do, you do almost everything badly why would you continue to do anything you're totally masochistic about it if someone calls you over something you almost are tempted to just do it forever yeah well, it depends. Give me an example of something you think that's that the that that. Or, or, well, I didn't. Or like with so the squat. Or, or, or like you, you didn't. Or like we'll just go back to the squatting thing. That's a super easy thing. Instead of just like copying to it right away and being like, actually, I was talking yeah. about these dates. Instead, well, you made up a lie about having a secret deal with a police station wherein they would hide evidence that yeah, there delusion. were coming to your house. Okay, delusion. but that's, that's not that's not delusion. You lied about that. I yeah, I convinced myself that lying about that would give me the best possible result. Okay. That's not delusion, dude. This guy's this guy's actually a bad person. I, I'm pretty convinced at this point. Somebody being like, like is clinically delusional in some capacity. <sighs> He's lit. He, I, not for nothing, but Boogie's literally assassinating the social conversation about mental health issues in on, online. Um, okay, this is what an actual delusion is. Okay, characterized by or holding beliefs or judgments about uh, external reality that are held despite in in country whatever, despite. Factual evidence, on the contrary, typically as a symptom of mental condition. Okay, Daniel Larson being convinced that he's dating Grace Vanderwall is a fucking delusion. Boogie thinking that he should lie is not a fucking delusion. That's not a. Del that's not what a delusion is. You just wanted to lie. That's not a delusion. You weren't convinced that it was true. You're just lying, and you know you're lying, and then you're calling it a mental health issue. This is why people don't respect you. Because, like, you, it's it's not about the past. It's because now that you're back in, like, some level of limelight, you're having an interaction with somebody that you consider to be an, like, an incredibly uh, influential content creator, and you're not wrong, you proceed to just lie about everything that you possibly can and justify your bad behavior instead of act like a person. You, like, you, you're, you're, li you're a liar. You're a lying person. Stay tuned. Um... 
That's why people don't like you, dude. This is fucking stupid. Okay, so uh, that's an example of during which you had an easy out, and instead you took the wrong path, clearly. You and lied. The same thing with no. the multi-counts. Why, yeah. why would you do it so poorly? Well, you like to do things poorly. Why would you keep right. doing it after you got called and out? So, because you love to do, do everything after you get called out. When you get called so out I, for fence-sitting, you immediately start arguing about how you're not a fence-sitter, and then you are a fence-sitter, and then you're not one. Well, so I do think... This is a perfect example of what I was talking about earlier. I'm very bad at communicating. Um, I don't know if it's... No, you're not. Way, way much you're not bad at communicating. You're lying. You speak very well and very articulately. <laughs> Um, you're, he's, this Boogie is, uh, of, Boogie is unironically ab uh, at above average intelligence. He's also just like a fucking, uh, un like a liar. Um, you don't have a difficulty communicating. You communicate what you want to communicate effectively. It's just a lie. You are trying to communicate the emotion behind what you're saying, but your words are lies. So you have like this weird assignment to like, oh, well, I, you know, I, I felt like lying was my best option. Like, and like you think that that's justifiable because you've been conditioned in your poor upbringing, mostly obviously based on your own words, that lying is not really a bad behavior to engage in. And so you're trying to convince people who realize lies are bad that lies aren't bad. And then they're they're like, why don't you understand what I'm saying? Because what you're saying isn't understandable. That's the problem that you're engaging in. My brain is wired. I don't know if it's autism. I have a very difficult what? time understanding how other. I don't know if it's autism. What is wrong with you? This guy is attributing every negative act attribute that he has to things that he doesn't have in a way that's so invalidating. This is unironically the most. I'm not even trying to be that guy. This is like the most ableist thing I've ever seen on the internet. And I saw Think Before You Sleep justify calling like a 10 year old girl with Down syndrome the arsler. Uh, that's real, by the way. So, like, uh, this is insane. How are you here? How are you at this point? What are you talking about? You might have fucking autism now. Like, it seems like you have everything. Like, what else do you have? Is the reason that you are saying people should go to jail for being misgendered because you're fucking of gender dysphoria now, too? Like, what don't you have, Boogie? A fucking conscience. Boom. That was good. <laughs> Off the dome piece, them, baby. And then I don't have very good control of filtering myself. Those are two bad things I'm very bad at. And they ultimately come out as a horrible combination of things to, to, to have, right? Especially in this, this sphere that we're in. Um, and so, like, because I have bullshit people, like, exactly, I lied about the swatting thing. That was a very stupid thing to do. To change those dates was a dumb fucking thing to do. And because I lied there and I got caught in the lie, I understand why you don't believe me on the alt accounts. Uh, I, and I, there's okay. no way that I can, can convince you otherwise. I can't find so out who caring, actually was doing that. I can't prove to you that that they did it i can't prove to you where i was when i did it and so one of the biggest issues like that is like, also with the hacking thing you claim that your twitter account was hacked and you it claim did it did that actually that happened that i immediately sense. i immediately went to a second account and was tweeting from it the whole time why would i go to a second account and tweet to from make it the whole look time? real obviously i, I love it <laughs> yeah normally i would disagree with tom here but i would not doubt that boogie would do shit like that of the credit that you're giving me here and that's amazing that you think i'm that level of mastermind but i'm just it's, fucking, not, a I'm, mastermind. it's not really mastermind <laughs> it's just childish behavior you say you wouldn't do it, and then you just admitted to me that during the swatting thing, you at least admitted yeah. you lied about the deal with the police. Right. Well, I will admit so about you the make things one that I lied to cover up another I, lie. Right. I will. I will lie about the. I will admit about the things that I lied about. Absolutely. But I can't admit to these things because I didn't do them. Well, I got hacked. Well, That's you'll say do them right now because you know I don't have the, the hacker. Well, no, no I stood by them the whole chance. time, and you'll never have evidence because I mean you might find evidence that you can mislead others with to think that you're. No, right. I mean, I mean, I mean, for oh, example. Well, okay. I mean, <laughs> you might find evidence. Wait, how the fuck would you find evidence of this? I'm whatever. That just sounded like a fucking self-report. But there is no evidence because it hacking thing you were like it happened through this mob crush thing and then mob crush tweets out no it actually wasn't no. that well no, no that was just was my us. best and then that was just my what best they actually did during the hacking think about yeah. it if i'm a hater who wants to hack you right why would i not leak anything i think the same reason they created the 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 twitter accounts that you're talking about and they did it in the way that they did it because they want me to look bad they, i think they want they me to look incompetent way more from leaking your messages there was nothing to leak they're definitely everyone no there really is actually I, a good I point give you, i'll give you access <laughs> to my twitter account that's a good point they would have been if they hacked you why didn't they leak your messages that's actually an excellent point there's no way he doesn't have 18 sugar babies in there like talking to these girls come on bro come on guy come on come on bro come on dude come on come on come on what are you talking about? I, there's nothing I, to I leak. there's I nothing interesting there there's nothing interesting there if they got into my twitter account they're not going to find anything interesting so you what think they looked think around they're like oh there's actually nothing boogie's a good guy and then they left well i mean no <laughs> just like they were probably very disappointed to find nothing there you don't think uh, it would have taken more time to go through all your messages well i mean they had six, over a week they had, i was locked out of my account for over a week it took i literally had to to have a brand sponsor reach out to another creator who knew somebody at twitter to get the account back because they changed the the recovery information immediately so yeah they had a week and a half to go through it they just there's nothing there to find i'm i'm okay. i'm a really boring person 
person for the most part. Um, but it, it, in the things Pretty that I'm not is. boring in, like for example, I have somebody I've been dating for the last seven months. Oh. Uh, I don't leave a paper trail. I, I don't follow her on any social media accounts. I don't take photos with her. I don't even really go anywhere in public with her because that's something people would genuinely be interested in. I thought it was because you can't leave your house without having a mental breakdown. I, which one is it? I just, like, we're all over the place with this one. And I'm afraid of her getting hurt. I'm afraid of her getting attacked like so many of the women I've dated in the past. So we just keep it entirely invisible. Well, um, look, if you stop dating him, they wouldn't get attacked. I'm just kidding. That was a little mean. Uh, okay, sure. And so I've always known that there's a chance people get into my Twitter account. There's always a chance. Do you really think people are that toxic to Boogie in real in the real in the real world? You know, you think that people are actually like that, uh, like attacking him? Because it seems I, I don't know. If, okay, maybe whatever. So people get my emails, so I don't do anything there that's remotely interesting. Uh, if you get into any, but of my that's not even the case. You bored out of your fucking mind. You on your websites, you used to write all this like wild sh about um, you know, because you ran like a blog. Oh, I did. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know that, yeah, back I in the nineties, um, again, oh. I was disabled. I was having a lot of difficulty finding income, so I built my own income the same way I did with YouTube. And originally, I was just doing web design. I taught myself HTML and also took a class on it, and then oh, learned okay. a little bit of my uh, MySQL, and uh, then used that to eventually do what brought real money in, which is designing websites for people. Uh, and then I started working so with like a again. lot of individual girls back at the time, designing their websites for them, even short content photos and stuff for them. And keep in mind, when I say content, I'm not talking like hub level of stuff. It was all R-rated stuff back in the day bro what did i say this dude did boogie made the original only fans they stole his idea bro you got to get your money off that bro i said that oh i didn't say that in this video i said that on the turkey tom video uh because it's not gonna be the same video as me two different videos probably wow dude where's your fucking money bro where's your freaking oh, only fans money dude really difficult to get footage like Does, developed okay. back okay. then so without getting too, then, too deep down this rabbit hole you know yeah. what i'm saying though like you you're not super into curating your public image because you, you've done stuff like this in the past well that was in the 90s so no okay, i was you not say that's in the 90s but during... then you go on debated podcasts and talk about how you used to be on 4chan all the time which obviously if you don't want people to know yeah. that you wouldn't say it but that obviously well, so i read 4chan i very rarely ever posted 4chan on 4chan but when i did i think 4chan i just go on there every so i'll just look at Porn, to be honest with you, like it's nothing. It seems kind of dead, didn't they? All the didn't they all the crazy the crazy guys move off there or something? Yeah. Post on 4chan. I'll tell you one of the on most there, interesting honestly. lessons I've learned in life. Um, What's that? So, like I said, I grew up on Sam Kennison, Dave Chappelle, even Lenny Bruce. I've listened to some Lenny Bruce, and that guy was fucking vile for a purpose, but still. Um, okay. I watched old iDubs. I watched old you. I've seen you know some of the messed up stuff that uh, creators have said, right? And I know that you guys didn't mean it. Um, and so what? one of the craziest things that ever happened to me on 4chan is I would read like poll every once in a while, but I was mostly on random. And the people that were posting stuff there, I thought they didn't mean it. And ultimately, when I left 4chan in 2012, okay. was probably the last time I posted there, but I genuinely left it in like 2008. So, so I thought on Beta, you were like, I was a huge 4chan head. I was saying like new, you know, F slur this, F slur that. Like, Oh, yeah. No, I grew up saying the F word all the time. No, you, well, no, you, 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 said, you said it on 4chan that you were like a big time poster, I thought. No, I'm much more of a reader. Uh, I, I might have on that podcast? I don't, I don't think I would because it wouldn't be true. But then like a lot of the times I have been embellisher. I've been an embellisher to tell a good story. I'm a good yeah. storyteller. And sometimes yeah, that requires yeah. embellishment. So I might have for the purposes of a story. For example, like another thing I just straight up lied about uh, was on the PKA podcast and was talking about. Is he saying that he lied about how he used to use slurs? <laughs> what? For what? So the, the kids would think you're cool? I don't get it. Defending my girlfriend. And what it really came down to is sure. like a nerd at the magic shop saying some shit to my wife, right? And me telling him to leave him alone. But I, I embellished the story where it's like I got up in his face and told him to go fuck himself. And he knew when he took one look at me, you know. I, I, I've embellished stories like that for sure. And okay. it's one of my biggest mistakes is that I never really thought about the consequences of somebody being like, well, I bet you are actually just sitting in your chair telling the guy to stop being an asshole. I never thought, like, it's just a story. I'm just storytelling. So I might have in that situation. But no, I didn't post about? on 4chan. I was more of a reader for the most part. But that's not to say, I, I mean, I think the thing that you're getting at is have I made racist jokes in the back? past absolutely oh, have i said yeah. things like uh I'll say in the future, i still yeah. use the word now because i am i am neurodivergent uh did i say f-a-g-g-o-t back in the day i absolutely did we, we'd say about everything the F, on, on the football team for example or in band by the way boogie is a classic example of somebody who like appropriates other people's like uh, uh, intellectual struggles and pretends that he's justified in using like whatever words like like if if i don't like the usage of the arsler i uh, usually will have like a pretty deep, deep conversation about it the representation of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities especially people who are higher sport needed but most people who use it you know like turkey tom probably uses it i don't know if that's true i mean he probably does a lot of people do he's not using it because he's ableist necessarily it is a very insensitive um, or like he doesn't hate people with disabilities usually it's like oh i'm gonna say this to like my friends or whatever other people on the internet whatever i still disagree with it but boogie is doing the same thing that's all it is but he's lying about it well i'm deeply mentally blah 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 just like he's lying about everything else in this thing that he's talking about it's a justification for him um to constantly do things like that you know <clears throat> 
So, like, I'd rather you just be like, I just don't care about the word. Instead of pretending like you have, like, some kind of an association with it in some capacity. You know, this literally is, to some degree, like, erasure of individuals with intellectual developmental disabilities. Like, their struggles and their plights with being called out to that slur. Uh, you know, it, it's the reality. It's just things that still do happen today. People will go out, you know, to malls and whatnot. This is, like, one of the places that a lot of people with, uh, in the IDD community do go out to. Because it's something that's, like, easier to bring people to, especially for support staff and whatnot. Um... And they'll go out and like they get people will say shit like that to them. Like that's a real thing that does happen. People will say like nasty, hurtful shit to people. Um, so like, just boogie, just stop. You're damning to the social conversation. Uh, this was uh, this was an FAG, and you're an FAG, and we're both FAGs. You would say that about everybody, but the gay kid. If you say that to the gay kid, we'll fucking curb stomp your ass, right? Nobody. Actually- yeah, I'm sure you would do that, Boogie. Uh, Boogie. After just telling us about this story where you pretended that you were the hero defending your girlfriend when you sat in a chair and said, "Please stop." Um, you know it's funny. Gay kids call me that. <laughs> 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 my wife's, my wife, uh, my wife's best friend and his husband, his gay husband. Uh, they, 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 they're funny. They're funny. You know actually says that to the gay kid that's a fucking slur when you use it that way so, right? so, it's a slurry so regardless of that, if you understand yeah. the context why did it bother you so much to the point that you felt the need to you know you, i think you deleted the tweet now but you, you tweeted you were like here's turkey tom by the way with like a oh because i because i thought you were calling me out on being racist so i was like i'm gonna call him out on the same thing yeah but why would you ever think that because i thought it was hypocritical to call me out on making racist jokes if you right racist. by the way he thinks that he was calling him racist because of the video that boogie didn't watch so but where did you get the, the like the understanding that I called you off for being racist? delusion? Delusion. I no. I literally went no. back into my old habits on Friday no. and, and built and all of this up in my head. No. I feel like that doesn't no. even make sense with the, no. with the tweets yeah. themselves because you were saying in the tweets you were like, "Well, I promise you, I." And what it sounds like he was doing is he saw that Tom made a, a video on him, assumed it was a hit piece, and that's fine if you interpret it that way, and then uh, decided to be like, "Oh, well, this guy's racist, so you shouldn't listen to what he has to say." That's literally it. I mean, that is the most commonsensical thing. Stop using the word "fucking delusion." You're annoying. You're very annoying. You're not okay with what Tom said. Many creators would be ashamed. It's like something to that effect. I, I, to be honest with you, and this is my opinion, I try not to say things like that anymore. And I make a you pretty did. strong effort to not say okay. things like this anymore. But I will okay, admit, so you, from time you know to time, those, I'm those DMs are from like and the reason, well, well, yeah, hold on, I agree. Uh, but what I'm saying is, no, I think don't. I have learned why I choose not to say those words anymore. There's a story. Um, if you're, are you familiar with Bob Saget, he had a podcast before he was murdered. I know who he is. Yeah, yeah, and he, uh, there's a podcast episode. I made a video about this. Oh, um, Bj Novak had a joke that he liked to tell that he can't tell anymore, and I'm going to repeat the joke here. Um, wow. And Brave. I'll probably get canceled, but it is a joke. So keep in mind. Nobody but the joke is that you. BJ Novak would be on stage in the middle of a set. He would say, we need a new Hitler. We need a new Hitler for healthcare, a new Hitler for education, a new Hitler for climate control. And if he has a few questions, answers to the Jewish problem, maybe we should hear him out. Right. And that's horribly awful, horrible, offensive joke. And the entire thing is BJ uh, Novak yeah. is Jewish. So, you know, he doesn't mean it. The reason he doesn't tell sure. that joke anymore is because people in the audience might agree with him these days. That's why okay. I think you don't tell those jokes anymore. Certainly why I don't tell those jokes anymore is because there's people in the audience sure. who might think so I mean there could always be someone that would think that you mean it. Yeah, and that's why I just choose not to risk it. But don't you think that was the case back then? I can be funny without it. I, and so don't I try to be funny. Do you think that was the case back then, too, though? No. No. I generally, I, I'm an old man. I know you're only 20, but I can assure you that there was a period of time where the vast majority of us no okay, knew no, that no, a comedian no. comedian was just telling jokes. Yeah, I'm this, sure. There's like, day, the vast majority of people do know that. That's why Louis C.K. and Dave Chappelle and Joe Rogan are popular because they go up and people think it's a joke. They're not popular because Neo. I, yeah, I mean, they when it comes to be, when it comes to actual comedians, people realize that they're telling jokes. Um, when it comes to other people telling jokes online, I, it's, it can be a little bit different depending on the framing that comes out, but especially in short form content. But okay, whatever. I would I would disagree because we've seen a rise of neo Nazis who mean it. I mean, you remember I live in Arkansas. I live less than a hundred. Maybe, um, or maybe, <laughs> maybe we haven't, and we just think there is because the inform- like we we see information all over the internet. But maybe, sure, whatever. Miles from the home of the clan. They live up in Harrison. You oh, think they're popular? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Neo Nazis like them. That's why they're popular. No, not why they're popular, but it's why it's dangerous for them to make those types of jokes. Neo-Nazis it's why it's dangerous for you to make those have always jokes. existed, though. Yeah, but they're really on the rise right now. They didn't exist in okay. this exact really same way back in the 2000. Rise? Are they really? It seems like it based on my personal experiences, but like, I can't say for sure. I think it's just the internet. Yeah, I think the internet allows. It's not reflective of real life. I think internet allows neo Nazis to communicate one another and organize one another. Probably. And that's how you get these marches. That's how you get these groups doing it's what they do. It's a march with like 300 people. I think 300 Nazis. Is still something to worry about. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I, I don't like okay. having one Nazi in my fucking country. Damn, so when I get to up to 300, I get pretty fucking concerned. Saying, uh, okay, if there's 300 people that march and there's 365 fuck. million people in the country, that means it's one in every million person is a Nazi. That's yeah. pretty good. Well, I think it always comes down to personal choice, right? Like you might choose to <sighs> okay. go to your YouTube channel tomorrow and inward this and then we're that. And they should help can talk about trans people and lose choice, DK, right? It's because it's because now it's like not socially acceptable like it was back in 2016, 17. Yeah, it and shouldn't now be. the advertisers are not as forgiving of stuff like that. So I think that's the well, real reason. Again, no, I think, are you 
you saying it's that you, the only reason. reason you don't make those jokes anymore on your YouTube channel is because you won't get paid if you do? Is that what you're? That's certainly part of it. Putting together? Right, that's interesting. Whatever. I don't make those. Kind of <laughs> like, I should be honestly, I respect the honesty. Like, what are you supposed to say? At least he's not sitting here talking about he's fucking like delusional, invalidating other people's uh, like fucking disabilities. I'm just delusional. I can't control myself. I'm just a neurotypical neurodivergent minor. It's not my fault. Um. Yeah, sure, whatever, man. Like, that's fine. I mean, again, I think it's it's wrong. But we're talking about a young kid or whatever, but <laughs> at least he's honest. Hey, fuck it, man. Fuck it. Entirely up to you, right? Like, I'm not here to judge you or anybody else. I choose not to make those jokes because, well, it's kind of one of the reasons I gave up on my Francis character. If you remember that, if people don't know, I used to do I, a I character think, uh, called Francis. Where I, I think the reason that he doesn't do it is because he's not funny. Nobody thinks he's funny anymore. And he's completely lost his spark to be funny. And, like, so now he can't get away with making those jokes. Um, that's it. I think that's all it really comes down to. I think he's just not funny, and he knows it. So he doesn't make those jokes anymore. Pounds. I would pretend to like abuse my sister character and like throw shit at her and break TVs and, and do all of that shit. And I went to a convention circa 2015, 2016, wow. and I was meeting people that liked the character not because he was the asshole, but because they represented them. They liked him because he was an asshole. They weren't there to make fun of the asshole. They liked that I was being an asshole. They thought I was actually that asshole. Okay. And so it really gave me pause. It's the same people who tuned into The Sopranos and rooted for Tony Soprano. I don't that... believe any of this, to be absolutely honest with you. I don't think that Boogie has an authentic thought in his entire fucking head. And I think that he completely took this uh, perspective from iDubbbz. I think that iDubbbz went in there and he talked about, he had like a really nice story where he talked about how he saw a trans fan. They're like, oh, I know you probably don't like me, but I, you know, can you sign this or whatever? And he's like, why don't you think I like you? And he's like, oh, I'm trans. And that was a very illuminating and sort of genuine. I think that Boogie just heard that. And it's like, how can I interpret that into my way? How can I interpret that for myself? That didn't happen. Dude, nobody, you didn't go like, oh my God, people are, people are, love me because they, they identify with being an asshole like oh my god i'm having such a negative so you're, this is not this is just not authentic this is not real this isn't an authentic thing this is a virtue signal trying to make it seem like you're like a good guy i'm a nice guy i'm a really good guy i'm a cool guy this is just abysmal dog shit that tune into rick and morty and root for rick or people that watch breaking bad and right to the end they were rooting for walter white that you were actually right. oh i can't tell you how many times to this day i will still get people saying like oh you you've changed your voice good job like that was never my voice man what but the that thing mean? is that's the only okay. content they've ever seen okay. i think one of the reasons i have a question about your video did you okay. put in the abuse allegations from back in 2017 did you include you those in your video it. Think, there was a, a girl by the name of lucy fox and she said that was emotionally abusive to her I and stuff like that i didn't include i didn't say that you were but okay um so let's talk about that for Terrible. a second. So I think one of the reasons it was so easy for people to believe that, and I've seen this comment, people saying, I've seen videos of you abusing your wife because they confused me for the character that I played. They think that the footage of me throwing Pokemon dolls. No, I think that it's just like you seem like kind of a bad person. You, you might be a little bit uh, like issue with that. I don't think that makes you a horrible person, but I think the bigger issue is that you're not introspective at all. You know the problems that you have, and you refuse to try to work on them. I'm not even talking about the weight. I'm talking about all the behavioral issues that he has as well. He doesn't care. Like I, he justifies every bit of bad behavior he has, and says like, "Oh, I might have autism. Oh, I might have ADHD. Oh, I might have this." My doctor said that I might. Have. It's like, dude, like, what don't the fuck don't you have? Like, he's just, he's just. Like, I, I hate to be like that fucking SJW, but he's just appropriating everybody else's shit just to uh, funnel criticism away from him. You know, I, I think that having a being in a society that understands mental health better is phenomenal. I think it's a really good thing. It's an overall positive. But some people like Boogie will weaponize mental health issues, ones that he doesn't even have and can't even identify with. And he will just completely assassinate the social conversation around them. And it's just like really annoying. It's just like super. It's offensive to people. Uh, I'm not like a son person, not super offended, but I guess maybe a little bit I am because like I have ADHD and like it's not that big of a deal or whatever. But like, Jesus Christ, bro. Like as I get older. I have been very uh, critical of myself and trying to change for the better. And there's things that I'll learn about my about it that uh, associate with I can associate with. Like I learned the other day that apparently uh, anger problems are something that's somewhat common people with ADHD because of the way that they just like control themselves. When I heard that, I didn't go, "Ah, oh, it's okay that I'm angry." I said, "Okay, I felt a little better." Because it made me like feel like I could understand myself a little more, but I didn't like go like, "Oh, cool, super base, I can be angry now." Because my no, this is what Boogie's doing. He's like, "I have a thing, uh, so it's okay." No. Like you, like it gives me a reason for the behavior. It makes me feel like less of a bad person because there's some stuff that maybe uh, makes it more difficult to control. So I have a, I, so like I know that I'm not fundamentally bad on myself, but it doesn't make me go like, oh, I shouldn't. Uh, I, oh, I, I guess I, I just I broke my TV or something. I haven't broken anything in the years, but oh, I broke my TV. Uh, you know, it's just my idea. I'm just fucking. Just stop, bro. Like, you're just being a little stupid ass baby. You're being a little pussy. I don't like it. It's weak. It's a weakness, and it bothers me significantly. So, 
balls. What up? Uh, a character of my, my wife playing the sister character was me actually abusing her. I mean, so I'm, I think that's I'm one sure of the reasons a small, people. A small portion of the audience think that, but that's ultimately like those people are forgotten. Yeah, I mean, it comes up every once in a while, still in my comment section. And I don't know if they're trolling it's like or not. A random comment. Like I get random comments all the time saying that I'm True. people's long lost brother and how we're gonna be reunited. Like you get to get so comments from people. Does that not bother you? Does that not scare you? Because it scares the shit out of me. It no, gets lodged in my head. I will think about one of those types of comments for days at a time. No, I'm, I'm always... He likes those comments. Gives him a justifier to act like a little asshole. I'm gonna increase the speed. I've been afraid like one of these motherfuckers is going to show up at my front door, and one of them did, you know, and, and because they thought. Yeah, which is wrong. But you also goaded that person to do it, which is like weird behavior. Uh, that was okay to do that because they had, you know, uh, depersonalized. I mean, also. You think Frank thought it was okay to do that? I don't know why you would have done it otherwise. He just I, it was I, funny. I think it was a not great thing for anyone to do, even if it was to yeah, someone like me. I agree. I agree. I, I agree with you, but yeah. I don't think he did it because he thought it was socially acceptable, or he thought you deserved it. He just thought it was funny and he wanted to do it for views, and it got him views. Yeah, I, it did. Uh, to this day, if you Google his name, I think a picture of me is one of the first things that comes up. So I don't know if that's the type of legacy that mm -hmm. I want to leave, but I saw him in the fish tank uh, recently. The fish <laughs> tank was actually well, we've seen the kind of legacy that you want to leave because it's something else. So, um, wait, mate. Oh, in the moment where he was like talking to Airsoft Fatty, I was like, man, maybe I'm wrong about this guy a little bit. I mean, I'll never have the opportunity to act on that. But his like heart to heart with Fatty, I was like, maybe I'm a little bit wrong with this guy, but whatever. Um, but going back to those abuse allegations, right? Do you believe that I was emotionally abusive to this girl or any girl? Is that something that you genuinely believe out of curiosity? I have no idea. Um, do I know? No, but do you think I mean, you, you yourself told me you're mentally ill, you're delusional, you yeah. have weird head spaces, so maybe. I so mean, I, I remember one time he said that he doesn't want to have kids because he's afraid that he'll like, he'll be a bad parent in a more extreme way. I don't want to misquote him, but I remember him saying something like that, and I was like, okay. You know, so, I mean, <laughs> uh, it sounds like maybe you do know, maybe you, maybe you, maybe you are, uh, struggling, you know, maybe you're struggling. I, I also just think that he didn't have kids because he, I don't think that has anything that deep. I think that he's just lazy and doesn't want to have kids. I don't think that it's, I don't think that it's any type of like, I don't want to be a bad father. I think it's more that like, he's just lazy and doesn't want to, he's selfish and doesn't want to take care of anybody else but himself. Um, <clears throat> so. That's something I want to admit on this podcast, and I know it's going to have a hell of a, a backlash, but I'm going to admit it. Um, I have been recently diagnosed as autistic, and for the longest time, I thought it was like post-traumatic stress disorder that would cause me to act no, the way that I... I don't believe that. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Just stop. Just stop. He alluded to... Uh, I could have swore the way that he brought it up before about his autism. He said it in a way where it's like, maybe it's autism. In a way where it's like, it was just random. There's, I just don't believe it. You don't, you don't have 18,000 different uh, issues. Shut up. You're so full of shit. <laughs> this guy's such a liar. Holy fuck. I would act when I would have an oh autistic meltdown. God. But I think now, more than autistic me and my therapist agree that... meltdown, like dude. You're not even a real person. Oh my god, you are like actually probably one of the worst people on the internet. You're a really bad person. I think that genuinely. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I saw the fresh and fit thing. I'm gonna release a video after this stream is over. Oh my god. This is this is insane. So the moments I've had that have been oh, anything that could fuck. be even remotely close to uh, abusive would be having an autistic meltdown. What those look like. And that girl did see this one day. Uh, it's me begging her to leave me alone. Please just leave me alone. Please stop raising your voice with me. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Hitting myself in the head. Just leave me the f alone. I need you to leave me alone. Just, please just leave. Just leave. That's not an autistic meltdown. That's you being angry. And being like, that's not for nothing, but that is abusive behavior. And listen, I'm not going to lie. Like, I've been there before. And I hate, I look back at my past and I'm not happy. I remember I got into a fight one time. And I took a piece of, uh, I think it was like a piece of metal. I was trying to fix the washing machine. And I started hitting myself with it. I really hate the person that I was back then. That wasn't an autistic meltdown. That was anger problems. Like, And sometimes that's that's how it would manifest. I would never hit other people, but sometimes I'd hit myself. And I hate that. You know, I'm very ashamed of that. It makes me very upset that I would allow myself to lose control. I find that to be a very fundamentally weak thing. Um, and I haven't lost that control in a very long time. But that's not an autistic meltdown. That's a fucking anger problem. And for you to try to justify it, that's not acceptable behavior. And you even calling it autistic an autistic meltdown, it sounds like you're trying to justify it as if it's okay. It's not okay. Like, do you not, like, you don't under, I don't think that any of this is genuine. Because if you're talking to a real therapist, I don't think you're even talking to a therapist. If you were talking to a therapist, they, they would say, like, these are bad behaviors. My wife is a behavioral therapist for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. She has people, like, it's her job literally to d d uh, design behavioral programs and protocols for people with these behaviors. They don't go, oh, this person's autistic, so they just started breaking stuff. That's okay. No, they, they go through a way of trying to uh, engage to try to change those behaviors, to help those people manage those behaviors. And the way that you're talking, it's just very, it's just very lazy and self-serving, and as as if uh, your therapist that probably doesn't exist just justifies every one of your bad behaviors. It's just not true. Nothing that you say makes any sense from any perspective. No professional perspective. No behavioral perspective. No personal perspective. This is f bullshit. He's full of shit. Like he's just full of shit. 
This is a lie. Please, please. And I, in retrospect, I feel that is borderline abusive. Um, and it's something it I've wanted is. to fix, something I've wanted to correct. My ex-wife probably saw that all of three or four times in the time they were together. That Whatever, girl dude. saw me do that when she raised her voice with me and was yelling at me, and I, I felt the need to, to try to get her to stop. And uh, But that said, to think that I have a pattern okay. of emotional abuse or some sort of like nefarious pattern of physical abuse or something like that, one of the reasons that has bothered me so much is because I managed to end the cycle of abuse. My parents beat on us kids like it was a mm -hmm. career. Emotional abuse was just what they called interacting with their children. And so the fact that I've never done that to another person is something I'm very proud of. I'm very proud that I've never intentionally hurt another person the way they intentionally hurt us and wow, that's, when, a, that's a pretty what a, what a what a standard i'm happy i didn't hit somebody physically wow that, that's that's not something to be proud of that's that's baseline it seems like you have such low expectations for yourself that like that's you shouldn't be proud of that that's good it's not like something to be proud of like i've never hit anybody in a relationship either i'm not proud of it though because that's just <laughs> expected behavior if I set my if I set myself to that being a proud moment in my life, then that's probably then like I'm setting a really low bar for like fucking what what should be proud of, okay? Um, I, I I'm more proud that I don't piss all over the toilet seat sometimes when I take a piss than I am of that because that's a more bigger moment to be proud of. I swear to God, there's a hole in the side of my penis sometimes, and it just goes everywhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> Am I right, fellas? Some people accuse me of doing that. It's very hurtful for me. I, I find it extremely painful. Okay, Does that right. make sense? So I'm glad. I'm glad to know because so many people are convinced that I, I'm that kind of person. Convinced that I did it, and uh, mm -hmm. that's very difficult for me to handle. In fact, that's something I have tried to like manipulate my way around. Is like try to convince people to, to see the reality that that's not a possibility. Uh, but so many people want me to be that for some reason. I don't know why. What else was in your video? What else? What other points did you make that? I don't know. We should have watched that. Um, yeah, it's a long video. Yeah, yeah. Um, here. Well, I feel like to some level, not just in the things that were in the video, but what, what do you personally invested about because i feel like there has to be some level of personal investment to have made as many videos as you've made there's probably things that you particularly probably not he just makes money off of it um that's something it's sad deep really care about yourself as tom that's my personal investment um i mean i don't, I don't know that it's like a moral investment just found your story interesting you know you're very youtube legend kind of thing make that money yeah, like baby that. You up very different. i don't know that it's uh like i wasn't like a huge fan of you back in the day or anything yeah yeah sure but you know i remember watching you during the uh, i was tom getting lower and, and lower and that neat thing happened you were talked about during that so Oh yeah, that was a that was a rough time for me, man. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I talked about Why? that in the video, um, but it, I mean the video is less of like points against you. I don't think there's any points I could make. Nobody has. Well, to talk about the Anita Sarkeesian thing um, a little bit. I'm not sure what you included in that, but like Gamergate was happening, and this is where I got labeled as a centrist because I believed during Gamergate that you could both fix gaming journalism without harassing women, right? I didn't think it had to be one or the other. We weren't going to fix what? gaming journalism by harassing women. That wasn't going to achieve anything, right? So I felt like we could fix gaming journalism and leave women in gaming alone, and what? that got me labeled as a centrist. Like you have to pick a side. Either we hate women in gaming, or uh, you know, I you're don't. a Sell out I don't know I the specifics of the situation, but in seeing how Boogie acts, I very highly doubt that that's where this all started. So I just don't believe you. Wholeheartedly. Um, but that said, I feel like I also miscommunicated that. So a lot of people felt like I was taking the feminist side of things, which wasn't necessarily the truth. But then feminists were mad that I didn't take their side. And so then I got put on a panel with Anita Sarkeesian, and I already had a reputation online as being some alt-right something in her mind. And so she went okay. off of me. Dude, I'm a people pleaser. I feel like if I was ever going to be emotionally abusive to anybody, it might have been her. <laughs> you she... like that? I'm not a centrist, but I'm a people pleaser. That's what makes you a centrist. Is because you're desperate to make everybody happy. That's what makes you a centrist. <laughs> like that is what the problem. And again, like you can be more center, but like he's like let I me mean, not even say centrist. You're a fence sitter. You're a fence sitter. She was being verbally abusive to me. She was saying some not great stuff to my face. So, and, I, mean, uh, so, so, I mean, this is the thing with the people pleaser. This is why people call you a fence sitter because you'll you'll have a very strong opinion one way yeah. that, I, that I think you genuinely feel. And then when someone responds to you, I mean, even if it's a you know a small amount of response, like with your take that people who misgender others should be in jail, and then people respond, you'll immediately go back the other way. Well, I didn't think they should be in jail, but I was in favor of there being some <laughs> level of uh, punishment for. Perp you called it a misdemeanor, and I think it's stupid to think that somebody should be punished for that. I think that you're an asshole for doing it, but like the fun <laughs> a fucking misdemeanor. <laughs> It's a misdemeanor if you misgender me. You know? That's just dumb to me. It's fucking stupidity. Purposely misgendering somebody? And I still think the, there's probably some level of punishment that is yeah, appropriate for that. I don't think jail time. Like, do you think they should go to jail for <laughs> for saying somebody's name wrong on purpose? What if I refuse to call you Boogie? I called you Smelly Boy. Should I go to the fucking prison for that? Should I get a misdemeanor for calling you Smelly, Smelly Guy? You stinky little man. Like, if I said that, would that would that mean I should go to jail? Because I'm misgendering you. Or I'm mislabeling you in some capacity. If I called you smelly girl, that would be a better comparison. Right, incredible stuff. Um, what are you talking about? Stop. Misgendering someone? No, for purposely misgendering somebody. If I sat here and started screaming at you, Tom, you're a girl. You're a fucking girl. Tom, you're a woman. Look at you. Look at you. You don't have a penis. Like, that's a verbal assault. That's messed up. That probably deserves a level of... Punishment. Verbal assault. Bro, you know what Tom could do if he did that? He could just turn the camera off. What are you talking about? That's a verbal. That's something. You think that that your example was that that? Now I'm definitely convinced. We need to we need to make that law that bans Boogie from the internet. That's what we need to do. 
punishment to some degree. In fact, in the United States, verbal assault is punishable by, by law. So what? I feel like that is that is fair. If that's the what type is, of verbal what assault, is it verbal, assault? verbal assault is punishable by law, and I support that. Do you not? If no. somebody verbally assaults somebody else, you don't think that's punishable by law? I don't think it should be. No. What is verbal no, assault? I'm not saying they should go to jail. I'm saying more maybe even a private. You're so dude. <laughs> I looked up verbal assault. Okay, verbal assault means an, in, uh, an intentional threat by word to do violence to another person. It's That's uh, coupled with the apparent ability to do so while creating a well-founded fear in the other person that such violence is imminent without subjecting him or her to physical attack. Verbal assault is threatening somebody's life, basically, or their autonomy, their their personhood. If It's not like, you're a girl. If it was like, I'm going to rip your dick off, that's verbal assault. It's not verbal assault to just say words. This guy, he, he, stop. Stop. Stop lying. You're a silly goose. You're being a real, you're really a real stinky boy right now. Oh my God. He's just like, is he lying or is he just didn't fact? I feel like he's, he, I feel like he has to lie. He has to, he has to know he's lying. He's misrepresenting what we're talking about here. Thing, maybe a fine, maybe a slap on the wrist, no. larger than a misdemeanor by any definition. But certainly, people should be taught to not verbally assault each other. Ooh. Otherwise, we're going to have a hell of an interesting I thought, I thought you tweeted, I can probably pull it up specifically. I thought you had yeah. tweeted that you wanted um, people to be felon for that. God, yeah, I hope said, I'm not that said It is entirely possible I said something like still. that, but that's not an opinion I would stand by now. That would be lunacy. Um, you said, okay, Boogie said people who purposely misgender should get hit with misdemeanor charges and even possible jail time if it involves into hate speech, is what you said. Let me read your quote. Uh, you said, I personally think if you're misgendering someone as a non starter, purposely angrily doing it, I think a slap on the wrist misdemeanor is well in order. If it's actual hate speech, then go yourself lock That's what you said. Yeah, if it's actual hate speech. Yeah, I, feel, I, I genuinely believe. So how do you, how do you define actual hate speech? Because in this context, you're talking about misgendering someone. When you say, well, so, is, it not, well, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it not such a large leap to come to the conclusion that you were talking about someone? Maybe if they're aggressively misgendering someone 20 times, then they should be locked up. Is that not what these people? Are yeah, well, let's, what's start, the number let's see again? if we can find some common ground here. If I had a mental episode and I walked up to a black man and I started calling him the N word over and over and over again in an attempt to incite something, um, would you call that hate speech? Andy, would you call that? Uh, yes, I don't think that you should go to jail for that. But if he hits you, <laughs> that's your fucking problem, bro. I don't know. I mean, maybe you consider that harassment because you're getting in his face and screaming. But that's not based on the words themselves. There's an entire situation that's surrounded by that. Something that's punishable by law. It might be punishable by law. I'm not, I'm, I'm not really sure. Not on board with that. Okay. Well, I think it's probably not. I, th I think it should be. I think that if I'm verbally assaulting someone in the hopes of creating an altercation, um, that that is assault and that should be that should probably uh, be punishable by law. Um, sure. I think specifically when you're doing that based on somebody's racial uh, background. Do you like how you like how Boogie made sure when he was doing this that like he had to be in a manic episode, so it, like wasn't his fault. If I'm in a manic episode, screaming the N word at a black person. Uh, what do you think that is? Uh, like, because you you would justify it. <laughs> like, why did that need to be in there? Why did you use yourself? Uh, why didn't you just be like, if somebody did this? <laughs> That's just weird. But okay. Religious choices that they're making, or the religion that they were born into, the sexuality that they were born with, I think that is particularly heinous and deserves more than a misdemeanor. How much more? I can't say for sure. Uh, but I say, yeah. If, if I if I had a mental episode tomorrow and I went downtown and started screaming the n word at a black person, why, why to do you need a mental episode? Attempt, uh, to why black person, people? I should be arrested and taken to jail and, and processed. Well, so let's talk. If I did the same thing for a trans person, I was assaulting a trans person with my words in the attempt to incite a riot, incite a fight, disturb the peace. Yeah, right, but that's should... like the intent. Somebody intentionally misgendering somebody by itself isn't them trying to incite a riot or or some kind of a uh, something. You've just assigned that. That's an additional thing. That could be like attempt to, to that. That's a different. That's a different prescription of punishment. But okay should be arrested and 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 taken in and i do believe that is hate speech i do believe choosing to purposely misgender and verbally assault a trans person is wrong i think verbal assault is not the same as misgender wrong, but do you think that that deserves jail time because a lot of things can be wrong without without needing legal punishment yeah probably no. not jail time unless you're like a repeat offender but certainly i think you should a be arrested and put offender. in a tank to like give you, you a cool off period what did you do it on youtube well like there's definitely gonna be ramifications for that probably not jail time but uh certainly youtube that's against youtube policy but what do you, you think should, should happen i don't know i'm not really judging jury if i were to do something like that i would like to be held accountable and i would like to think that accountability would involve certainly no sponsors on my video, uh, I would probably imagine that it would get my monetization taken away for a period of time, like a cool-off period, and I think that would be appropriate. I don't necessarily think a channel should be deleted or removed from the platform for that specific offense as a first-time offender, uh, because I feel like people can learn and grow, learn why that was wrong to do, and, and grow. I mean, I think that they should just demonetize the videos when that happens. You know, nothing that, nothing too deep here, but okay. You know, if they decide to, because like, they, you know, they might want to be more advertiser palatable, like, that's fine. I don't think that they should or shouldn't. I just think that if that happened, like, whatever, it makes sense to me. <clears throat> Person. Um, so somewhere along that lines, I would imagine. Where would you? Where would you put that line? Uh, if it was up to me, then nothing would happen. But, you know. 
It's not up to me. Yeah, yeah. But I wonder, so the same way you said, there's things that you regret from when you were younger. I wonder if you'll change that opinion as the time progresses. Because I've noticed uh, a lot of people in my generation that I was born around were very conservative. And I even okay. was a registered Republican when I was 18 years old. Uh, uh -huh. But then I began to realize like what the social aspect of being a conservative was for me. And I started voting off of yeah. not financial issues. Because I, I still think I'm a financial conservative to some degree. Um, but socially, I'm a bit of a liberal. Uh, more a libertarian than I think a liberal. But as I've gotten older, I've gotten more. I mean, I just don't believe anything. This is the guy who like had that weird, he had like this weird take about the Hershey Kiss thing that you would expect like a 20 year old kid to have um the hershey when they had the she her hershey thing and it was like just like babbling bullshit it's fine if you agree with it but then he'd like now he wants to pretend that he's like this fucking advocate for trans people where he thinks that hate speech is violence i don't believe it i don't believe what you're saying is true i don't think you're authentic i think that you're a smelly girl <laughs> i think you're a stinky little girl <clears throat> what do you think about that? Liberal. I don't give a sh. If you want to put on a dress tomorrow and tell me you're a woman, I don't care. You're a woman. I'll use whatever pronouns you want. I don't really care. Uh, if you wake up tomorrow and you decide you want to be in love with a man or two men or three men and, and five women and have a whole household, Mormon household of 27 wives and two husbands, I don't care. I just want you to have the same rights as everybody else. Live as happy as you want to live. I don't care if you're black or white, short or tall, fat or skinny. That doesn't really matter. I just want people to live the best life that they can live. Um, and I do believe socially, uh, Americans deserve the same rights that every other first world nation has. I, I think we Whoa, deserve face. access to healthcare the same way wow. every other first world nation has. I think we deserve so access to education the same unique, way every first world nation so does curious if you think you'll hold that opinion when you're 30 uh, and 40 uh, or do you think you'll more side on the just leave everybody alone kind of opinion i mean i'm not i'm not anti um trans rights i'm just also pro the rights of people being mean to them yeah do you so out of curiosity do you think it's wrong to shout fire in a crowded theater and start a stampede and get people killed that's a different that's that's not the same thing that could be considered like a thing that's that is it's not the words that's the outcome of that. in immediate outcome of that is that people are going to get hurt because you're lying about it. Wait, this isn't the same thing. Like, yes, your words have weight, but like you're saying, I can't, like, you shouldn't misgender people. But you can't compare somebody misgendering somebody to yelling fire in a crowded movie theater. This is ridiculous. They're wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it should be punishable by law to do that? Do I think that specifically yes. is punishable by law? Yeah. So you do agree that speech should be limited to some degree in some scenarios, right? Um, no shit. And we just we just disagree where that line is. And I think verbal assault, something I've even done, you know, we, we've seen me lose my temper. Uh, it's definitely happened a handful of times in my lifetime. Uh, it, I, I feel like I should not have done that. It was harmful to the people I did that to. And there should be some sort of ramification. I don't think felony. <laughs> And I definitely don't think jail time. But that's a good, I think that's an interesting one. And I think I think your point of view is valid. I just don't particularly share the same point of view. Um, but I think there's a lot of people out there that. So why do you think it's valid? Like, if you don't agree, I don't know. Okay, whatever. Agree with that. I do believe, like, for example, people have asked me why I haven't had the Lucy Fox video taken down where the girl falsely accused me of emotional abuse. And it's because she has every right to say what she wants to say. Um, my picture's in that. I could abuse copy. What? What do you mean? <sighs> what? You, this, would, this would fall under the category of something you would consider wrong because they're lying about you. What are you talking about? Just because they're lying. Like, you think that they should get a misdemeanor. And also, you just called it copyright abuse to, say, to try to get that thing taken out. So you're aware that you actually don't have the legal grounds to do what you're saying. So stop trying to convince us you're doing it because you're fucking altruistic. Liar. You're right. It wouldn't work out well for me. Uh, but I could do it. No. Uh, well, she has a right to say what she wants to say. But if you want to take her, you know, to, I mean, legally, she has a right to say it. But if I you want to do that, but I did it. So. And I never, she doesn't have anything to begin with. Or at least she didn't at the time. But secondly, she was young and people make mistakes. It was a very stupid thing for her to do, but I don't feel like that should ruin the rest of her life. I mean, yeah. I, I mean but maybe not. But that allegation would. caused a lot of struggle for you. Caused a lot of strife for you. Aren't, aren't you? Yeah. About that? Well, number one, I'm pretty miserable all the time anyway. So it wasn't a huge uh, hit. Oh, secondly, I felt like after watching the video, anyone with a brain is going to see what she's really upset about is that the 10 or $12,000 she got in that three months wasn't enough. She wanted twice that, three times that. She wanted to live in my home. She wanted to have all of my money. She wanted to have access to everything. Um, we, she, she would even bring up, when I move into your house, uh, this is going to change. I'm going to get rid of all this nerdy shit. Um, and I'd remind her, like, we're, you're never moving in. Like, this is not the kind of arrangement we have. She's very upset at those types of things, you know? So I feel like anybody who watches that video hears her make one claim of emotional abuse and spend nine minutes complaining about money, they'll know what she's actually about. And I think most people do. Okay. I think most people do. Okay. There you yeah. go. I guess you don't need to take it down. Yeah. I, I mean, it's done irre irrevocable harm. And I hate it to see you bring it back up. But I think if you're, you're, it seems like your video, and this is something I've seen you do, so it makes sense. It was more of a historical thing. It wasn't a personal vendetta. You were trying to draw a conclusion. You literally thought that it was a hit piece at the beginning of this. What are you talking about? You thought that he actively called you racist and whatnot, and you thought that it was malicious, and now you just think it's a historical piece. This isn't what you think. This is what you've pivoted back to. You've walked it back to this. You were just kind of going over the history of some of this stuff, right? I mean, there definitely is a conclusion. I think the conclusion is that you have a very bad habit of when something goes wrong, you tend to kick yourself in, you know, in the foot. Or when something goes right, you tend to fumble it. Um, Like the end of the video with the whole crypto thing, in which case you made a bunch of money, and then you foolishly began believing that somehow you're educated on crypto or you could keep investing, and then you lost it all, you know? Can you hold on a second? Okay, it said it wasn't recording, and I panicked, but it was. Okay. okay. Woo! Holy shit, because we have such good here. Okay, I've hit record again. 
Yeah, it is recorded. Uh, so you mentioned the crypto. Uh, yeah, that was a very stupid thing for me. Do Do you know why I did what I did in that particular instance? Are you interested in learning? Because I think our audience might be interested. Um, I believe the claim is that your your friend, I think it was Jagger Nuggets, gave you advice or something. Uh, so yeah, so I had like, I, this sounds like so much money because it is, but I can say for certain you make more than this in a month. If I looked at your statistics, I bet you do. But I had saved and saved and saved and saved, and after my divorce, I looked at my bank account and I saw my YouTube numbers dwindling, and I saw the uh paycheck dwindling every month, and I had about one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars to my name. And you think I make more than that in a month? Don't you get like 10, 20 million views a month? Um, I get like 10 million on my main channel. I don't make $175,000 a month. I wish. So uh, 70, 80,000 if I had to guess then? Yeah, around there. Based on those numbers? Right, right, right. So in two or three months, Jesus you made as much Christ. as I made all 17 years on the platform to some degree. Like as much as I was able to save after everything, right? Um, and I never made the kind of money you guys think I did because I just struck my fame way too early on the platform and just the money wasn't there back then. The money's there now, but it wasn't then. I've never made 70 or 1,000. You know what my biggest monthly paycheck on YouTube was? Uh, not including sponsors, about $17,000. Including sponsors, the most I ever made so in a month was about three. So. Um, I mean, I mean so that's I, a great paycheck though. Most people don't make that in their, in their entire life. And they, oh, and I squandered it too. I got divorced, which cost me like a quarter of a million. But and then like, even yeah. beyond that, there's people who make, I mean, money, you know, like you did, like 10, 20,000. That's a very respectable income a month for any person. Yeah, if I could yeah, get back. That's, to an, that's an incredible income per month. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure when he was complaining about money, he was still making $80,000 a year, which is a good amount of money. So that I would be very happy. I, I, you know how much I made last month with everything involved? About 3K. That's why I did the fight because 10K is a lot of money to me these days. Uh, but I had about $175,000 and I did the math. Like my mortgage every year is 24,000, right? So just my mortgage alone, my health insurance is 780. Uh, then gas, water, electric, all the a other year? stuff. I was spending about $5,000 a month. So I sat down and I did the math and I'm like, wow, I'm broken less than five years and I'm losing my YouTube income and I don't know what else I could do. Well, so then, well, my, well, don't you think what you could have done is change your YouTube content to make more money? Well, I was trying to do that every day. I'm trying to do that right now. That's, that's, that's not what he, if he, what he needs to do is make YouTube content. Like he doesn't really need to make a lot of change. Like, Literally, he could just do what I do and stream for like a two hour. You can stream less, but stream for a few hours a day doing some dumb bullshit video reaction or something. <clears throat> he's a lot of things that he could do, do to make money. He just isn't. He's simply not interested in trying to try is really what it boils down to. He's not interested in making an effort. That's the biggest issue. Literally what we're doing right now by recording this. I'm I've tried to pivot as many times as I can, but I just but don't have the skill talent. It's very it's very like um kind of low effort, low low energy stuff. And I understand what you're saying. You, you know you don't you don't necessarily have the time for everything. Yeah, yeah. But, he does you know, have the time I, for I, it. I, I think you have the time to put in a little more work to the videos to maybe try and write some videos, to maybe try and edit them a little better, to make the thumbnails better, to make the titles better. Like I think there's always time a, for that. There's always improvements to be made. And if you look at my content just a year ago, I think the content I'm making now is definitely more interesting and more palpable with better thumbnails. Um, if you go back two or three years, it's drastically better. Um, post pre COVID and post COVID was definitely a huge shift. Uh, post Frank was another shift. And in the last year i've really been putting some effort into those things but i don't understand what youtube wants or needs it just i don't know it's just what people want to watch yeah and so i'm trying to i'm trying a lot of new stuff and some of it's definitely worked in the last year well i think people like genuine people on youtube and you're not one and i think that that's where your issue is so Seems fucking baller. I like the axes, brother. Pretty cool. Uh, but at the time, I thought with this subreddit going against me, and I thought with uh, these rumors of me being an abuser or a, whatever I was, uh, plus the actual things I'd done, like being mentally unwell and being an asshole uh, and all the effects I was having, I'm like, it doesn't matter what I do in my YouTube content. People hate me now. So I'm going to do what I can to make this money. And my friend, Jesse, I hate to talk his but he 10 x some money on crypto and was convincing me that I could 10 x my money too. And I thought, hell, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to go broke anyway, uh, either I can go broke this year. And I remember I wasn't planning to live through that year anyway. Yeah. Uh, I could either go broke this year. Didn't he say earlier that he was just like looking for attention or something when he claimed he was going to take his own life or something? Uh, maybe it wasn't attention. Wasn't it just that like he was sa he said something where he was like, I wasn't serious about actually doing that. Didn't, didn't, am I remembering that correctly? He's like, oh, I wasn't really going to do it. Am I, am I wrong about that? Or am I remembering that correctly? and just shuffle off his mortal coil. Or if I have $2 million, I'll probably choose to live. If I have enough money to retire off of, you know? Uh, it didn't work. <laughs> it did the opposite of work. There was a period of time where I turned that 170 into like 700,000 before taxes. If I pulled it out, I would have cleared like, I would have almost 2X my money. And that would have been great. I really wish That's I had amazing. done that. That's amazing. Uh, and then I woke up the next day and it was worth less than I put in. And but the thing is, it wasn't just like a one day to the next day thing. It's like you made No, it was. Money. It really was. I put my money into storage and one day it was like 700,000 and the next day it was worth less than 200,000. What do you mean you put it into storage? Because you didn't cash out. Well, I bought the coin and the coin has never gone back up in value. Yeah, but you didn't cash out. Cashing out would be what? No, I did. I did end up cashing out eventually. Yeah. I took that huge loss. Took the huge but, but you didn't, but that coin's but never going back You didn't up. cash out when it was up. Because when it was up, you made right, a yeah. video about how you had all this money. Yeah, it was a very stupid thing to not cash out then. And you know, it's so interesting to, like, what do you think I said in that video? Have you seen that video? Yeah, but he didn't, uh, he's talking about how it happened overnight, but this happened like a long time, over a period of time. So, okay, whatever. So what do you think I said in that video? Because I know what I thought I said. What do I think oh yeah, he said, I didn't want to die. I wanted the pain to stop. Yeah, that's what, it, yeah, whatever. 
Yeah, like what do you I think, think the point of the video? You got was? extremely lucky, and that you hadn't cashed out yet, and that you were gonna you were gonna wait a little longer, but that you were <laughs> be able to retire. Yeah, uh, which was like I said, seven hundred thousand dollars, which was enough I thought to live the rest of my life on, because the prospect of me living another ten years seemed really slim. Well, even, yeah. regardless of that, seven hundred thousand, you know, like you said, after taxes, five half a million. Yeah. yeah, but still, that's amazing. And then you that's would, you'd be, you would yeah. be able to, and you could have cashed out then. But you had and a, I had my you had what sucks. Well, yo, and on top of that, you know what sucks so bad about it? I had myself convinced that wasn't enough money. Like I would, I would cut my left nut off right now and eat it to have half a million dollars right now. Uh, there's nothing I wouldn't do to get half a million dollars right now. Uh, but at the time when I Oh, you like oh, get a job. <laughs> no, they were telling me to keep my money in. They were all telling me to keep it in. Jesse was telling me, keep it in, keep it in, write it out, write it out. We're some bad friends, man. <laughs> yeah, I would not disagree. We need new friends. Yeah. Well, I mean, me and Jesse don't really talk anymore. In fact, I'll tell you, I, I don't. Do you think that uh, Do you think that he's just like ashamed? Do you think that um, Turkey Tom is just like, oh, not ashamed, just kind of feels bad for. Um, just kind of feels bad for Boogie at this point? Because it just sounds like he's got, like, he just pities him, and it's just like kind of like one of those conversations, you know? Um, I don't even know if I'll include this in the video, but did you see my fight? Did you watch this fight I did? It was an embarrassment, obviously. Um, it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a huge embarrassment on my part. I mean, a lot of people are proud that he's gotten to the ring, and I'm kind of proud that I got in the ring, but I had no chance against the guy. He just, he's younger, healthier, has the longer reach, was more fit. Like, my healthier. six weeks preparation was just going to physical therapy, learning how to uh, walk again so I could make. I love that. I love that he's more fit. You're talking about fucking wings of redemption. Holy fuck. What a world we live in, huh? Um, sure. To England, like that was my focus, right? Uh, his focus was learning to fight, so he went in just infinitely better than me. Um, but that said, did you see what my opponent was wearing? My opponent was wearing a Psycho Dad t shirt. Jesse sponsored my opponent. Uh, yeah, he well, made, yeah, well, like that's crazy. Do you understand why he was spiteful, though? Yeah, he actually said in the video that he hoped I got hurt, which I think is because it's not because of the crypto, it's because you called him transphobic. Oh, because he was, he was being transphobic, yeah. He, he said okay. something transphobic, it was really messed up. The thing okay, he said, so, so, but, but you understand, like, you okay. with all of your he say? He decided that it would be good to go after this guy for something he did. I, I guess he was being transphobic, I don't know if he was something he apparently did privately. I don't think I've ever been transphobic, but yeah. I do have baggage but i've actually i, I Wait, he did something prize was privately that was all this was he did something he like privately was mean to his trans friend and you felt the need to publicly call him out as transphobic oh my god the virtue signal is fucking blinding the blinding light of the fucking white knight virtue signal holy shit if he beat somebody sure but he just you're so this is so loser, dude. What a loser thing to do. Holy fuck. I grew up with a trans person. Uh, I'm not saying you have to be trans That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, gotcha. that, yeah, is yeah. that you both have histories. You yeah, obviously yeah. more than him. And, and, and a moment of weakness for him, when someone came out against him to try and hurt his reputation, you backed that person up instead of your friend. Well, the reason I backed up that person is because it was my friend Emily, and she asked me to help, and I chose to help because she's a friend. And me and Jesse had not talked in years at that point. We had a falling out. Uh, he threw me out of his house for just the weirdest reason. He threw me I out of his it. house because someone else was filming girls that I didn't bring. Right. That is so weird that I got thrown okay. out. Okay, yeah, I'm sure. I don't know the whole yeah. situation in there. And some hookers involved or something but what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i'm, I'm sure this, the guy who made porn websites and talk, regularly talks about sugar babies and fucking jerking off is he definitely had nothing to do with the whatever prostitutes or whatever there yeah i'm fucking convinced dude I'm convinced, bro. That you understand why he was like kind of mad. Yeah, but I still think it was kind of unusual to sponsor my opponent there or whatever. It like, unusual? It's, who cares? Yeah, it's really unusual. I wouldn't have done that. I don't think. I mean, I it's, it's like petty. It's funny. It I mean, it's, it's just he was mad at you because you, you at a low point when someone's making allegations to try to cancel him, you know, you back that person up. And it's not like it was an allegation of like philia or sexual assault. It was an allegation yeah. that he said something mean. Do you think it was wrong for me to tell him not to assault, uh, not verbally assault or drag? I, like, it turns out Emily also f***ed up really bad too. I didn't know that. Oh, so then she lied. Great, cool stuff. She, he didn't verbally assault anybody. Verbal assault is an act of threat, is a threat of violence. So, so stop saying you're an idiot. Stop lying at the time when I joined the crusade against Jesse. I didn't know that Emily had also been. What did Emily do? I don't know the story there. So I don't know that well either. Uh, apparently, she was making like jokes about putting estrogen in his food, and apparently, there was like something where oh, she was okay. sitting in her room listening to him have sex one day or something and like made a joke the next day. So Jesse was right to be petty in that situation, and I think right. he was right to be petty in my situation as well. Give him full credit, right? Um, at the same time, I think it's also okay to tell your friends, hey, don't be transphobic, hey, don't be racist. I don't like it, but you didn't say that to him, you said it on Twitter in public. Yeah, it was a really stupid thing to do, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're lying, piece of shit. So it sounds like they were having a petty argument. He transgender, he misgendered her. I don't care. That's like if I was fighting with somebody and they're like, you're fat. It's like, oh my God, he's a fat phobic. It's like, okay, whatever. We're having a fight. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, a personal friend? Shut the fuck up. This whole thing is stupid as shit. He, 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 there was a falling out that he had with this guy. So he decided to uh, pick up whatever narrative the other person said because he wanted to be like a virtue bully. Oh, I'm a good person. You shouldn't be transphobic. Shut the fuck up, dude. Well, you shouldn't be transphobic, but shut up. Like, you don't even care. You don't give a shit at all. Just up. In retrospect, I think it is important to hold people accountable sometimes for the same things they say and do. Certainly, people like you. No, stop, stop, stop. You're, you're, you're full of shit. Holding somebody accountable for something doesn't have to be a public uh, display so that people think that you're a good person. There's proportionality to crimes, to things that are done wrong. This isn't even a crime in any capacity. You did not maintain the proportionality of what happened very clearly.
who have held me accountable, right? And when it's an actual thing I said, when it's an actual thing I did, I think it's important to hold people accountable, right? That's why I liked Content Cop. I didn't necessarily like every episode of Content Cop. There really isn't anything wrong with exposing someone as a bigot. He didn't expose somebody as a bigot. They had like a guy and a, two friends had a fight in private and he apparently might have misgendered him and it turns out she had an ulterior motive because she was like watching him have sex or something like it was more complicated this isn't like an actual thing that happened <clears throat> Uh, but I liked it when he held Keemstar accountable. Someone Whoa. should hold Keemstar accountable Whoa. for the things he says and does, right? Even Keemstar admitted you? that on my podcast. Someone has to police check him because he's a very powerful person. Um, and, and Idubs was the person. So that said, I, I never had any delusions he was going to get canceled or his career was going to be over. Hell, he barely uploads as it is and nobody watches what he uploads now. So what's he going to lose? He's a multimillionaire, I'm certain of it, based on the homes that he owns. So he, he's not going to lose his income because he doesn't need one. <sighs> uh, I just I thought it was important to say, hey, don't say things like that, if uh, specifically to a personal friend. Uh, but Fair yeah, enough. I agree. Yeah. But don't you think there's a good reason for Jesse to be upset given the fact? that this person who had now you admit who had him over right who had yeah, personally yeah. him over then tried to do yeah. it to him in public and what you did was back them up instead of you know just so so here's what i'm gonna do a classic boogie back pedal right now because you well it's not even it's not even like you backed them up like you should just shut the fuck up because it's a personal matter that you don't need to be involved in you don't have to be involved in everything some new perspective and new information <sighs> and i think you're right and so i'm going to back pedal from the thing i said five minutes ago and i do this Whoa. kind of shit all the time when i'm given that's new why you're a weak loser coward because you're just constantly backpedaling after five minutes of somebody asserting something you have no you shouldn't have opinions on things if you can't have a strong one and a new perspective sometimes my perspective changes and specifically because in this particular case and i hope it give you better insight into the way my brain works Bro, there's um, a difference between changing so your perspective and then instantly changing your perspective constantly are two different things everybody obviously is going to change their perspective on things as time goes on and, and like new information comes out but this guy's like changing his perspective after a minute it's wild. It's wild. Personally painful to me. <clears throat> I painted Jesse out to be the bad guy in my brain. Oh, he's a bad guy. He made oh, my fight well. about him. How dare he do that? Yeah, that's, that's so called being a, bi a normal biased person. You had a falling out with a friend, so you looked at them in a negative light. This isn't a delusion the way you're trying to uh, allude to it. This is just a behavior that you don't check because you're an immature fucking 40-year-old. Oh, messed up. This moment's about me. I don't want to be thinking about him and our drama in the middle of my moment and my fight. And when I see it from this new perspective, I'm like, wow, I was the asshole. I probably shouldn't think that way. Does that make sense? <sighs> no. I don't know, Jesse. I mean, the whole story fire thing was probably not good, but yeah i mean at the end of the day it's all like personal drama from friend to friend and, and, and i i regret having aired it at all in fact it might not even make uh this edit but if it does hi jesse i still love your brother to some degree so is there any other any other big ones that you think our mutual audiences would be interested in is there any you still love them yeah i'm sure he thinks that's true i like how he's like i don't know if this is going to make the podcast i wonder if, if uh, boogie's even going to release it in in general or if he's gonna be too afraid to do it what out of all the things that you researched in the video what do you think was the most it. interesting thing we haven't covered because i'm sure I, i've wasted so much of your time already today no it's all right um you know i agreed to come on i'm recording too by the way just to make sure yeah of course yeah of course yeah yeah sure um, um, but yeah i mean I, I don't think there's any i have a question about I, I don't think there's anything in the video that's like a questionable situation where it's like did this happen because I, I think i pretty much know the truth of all of it um i guess well, I, 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 i'm curious now what yeah you're, you're right he's just right. constantly learning and growing every eight seconds you're right i he's he's basically i mean if you think about it uh, boogie's basically a saiyan because he just gets knocked out and immediately gets better and changes. He's like, holy fuck, I'm rapidly evolving. Holy shit, I'm just a better person every second. He's just constantly training. It's incredible, actually, if you think about it. Frank has all events and how you would look back at that. Would you have done anything differently? Uh, I yeah. probably wouldn't so go to, my to the house. Like, I think you, you're friends with Frank to some degree. I've certainly seen photos of you guys together, right? We've hung out, yeah. See, I think you know him better than I do. Um, But my perspective of him at the time, somebody came into my chat. <laughs> my fucking mother-in-law texted me and my wife, and she's like, I got my shake. What happened is yesterday, we had like a like a little like movie night thing. <clears throat> Well, we didn't watch a movie at all. They just, or my wife and my brother-in-law and mother-in-law just talked, which is fine. I did some work. Um, but we, I, I went to five guys and like, I, you know, she wanted like a burger and a shake and I got the shake, but I, I never, I, I bought it. I bought it, but I never picked it up. <laughs> like I forgot, I left without it. So she like called, <laughs> she called them so that she can get the shake. So she picked it up today. It was just kind of funny. She just texted me that she got it. So it was silly. And said, oh, Frank Castle's coming to your house. He's going to hurt you. He's going to murder you. He's going to end you. He's going to kill you. Well, I was live streaming one okay. night. And I actually was in such a bad mental state at that time. I started crying. Like, that's oh, out there. Wow. I'm sure people it's can so. find that clip if you haven't. Um, and so I messaged the guy. And I'm like, hey, man, are you, like, for real? Or are you just, like, a comedian? And I also went to, like, Keemstar and Ethan Ralph and people like that. Is this guy, like, actually dangerous? And they all assured me that I was, he's a comedian. Nothing bad's going to happen, Boogie. It's all a bit, you know. So I agreed to go on the Ethan, uh, Ethan Ralph podcast with him. And he, I was like, go ahead, be the bad guy. You, you can clown on me. I don't really care. And he did all the same uh, he said stuff like, oh, you're fat or you're fucking gay, you know, the, the usual French.
Um, but then halfway through that podcast, he's like, what happens when I show up at your house? And I'm like, I don't know, man, I'll take you out to dinner, I guess. And eventually he's like, no, Boogie, you don't understand. Uh, I'm coming to your house one day. And when I do, it's going to be the worst day of your fucking life. It'll be worse than the day your parents molested you. I'm going to fucking ruin you. Wow. And that triggered something in my brain, man. And it triggered the old country man in me that said, we don't take shit like that from nobody. It also triggered the victim part of me where I'm like terrified of the guy now. And so I, I spiraled out of control. I left the podcast and I took him for his word. Um, as I think anybody would, I think most people, if somebody says something like okay. that to you, you're going to believe them. Mm. And, uh, so six weeks later, he's in my town taking photos in my neighborhood. I'm in your town, you fat F-A-G-G-O-T. What are you going to do about it? Yeah. So I reach out to Keemstar again and I'm like, hey man, this isn't cool. Why is he here? What's going on? Don't worry, Buggy. He'll never come to your house. So two days later or however long, 24 hours later, I don't know. I was out of my mind. I didn't sleep. We barred every window and door. We set the alarms. We put shit in front of doors so he could come in. I didn't know I was going to get shot or killed. I had no clue. And that's what I genuinely had convinced myself was likely. I even called the cops the night before and talked to him. If this guy shows up, what am I supposed to do? So if he tries to enter your home, you have every right to defend yourself. Okay. So then I end up on that podcast with uh, Keemstar and the old country man and me comes out and I just kept telling him over and over again, if you show up here, son, I'm going to kill you. So why didn't you kill him? Why didn't you kill him? <sighs> I don't think I'm a killer. That's the easiest one. Uh, um, I don't think I have it in me. Because it would have been illegal. But because based on the scenario, he wasn't trying to break into your house. Why didn't you just call the cops? And how do you switch between being this like perpetual victim versus this old country man, badass guy? Seems like you're just trying to engage in a power fantasy. Why didn't you just call the cops? Like, hey, this guy's here. He's on my lawn. And like, if he, if he doesn't leave, I'm gonna shoot him or something. And then the cops will come quickly because they don't want to get when people get shot. Um, bada bing, bada boom. We we're all winning. There you go. Why didn't you just do that? That's what I would have done. I'd be like, okay, call the cops and just. I'm not gonna. I don't care. I'm not gonna deal with it. I don't care. Like, that's loser shit to do. What am I gonna do? Go fucking fight him myself? That's cringe. Plus, you know, that's the reaction he wants is for you to act like a fucking unhinged goblin. So. The second one was I saw that GoPro strapped to his head and I realized I was going to have to sit in a court and watch me murder somebody from their own perspective. And thirdly, it's because he didn't do anything threatening other than verbally assault me. And I don't believe you should end a person's life okay. for verbal assault. Just because, because he's calling me an F-A-G-G-O-T. Just because he's calling me the N-word. Just because he's on my person. That's not verbal assault. That's using slurs at you. Verbal assault is a threat of violence. Which is you're going to make an argument of that actually based on... What he said where he's like, oh, it's going to be the worst of your life. You could probably make a decent argument on it. But. Property. I believe he has the right to leave. And uh, he chose to do so, and I'm glad he did. I'm glad I didn't put it. I don't think that, like, Boogie's trying, Boogie's trying to be, like, this virtuous guy. Like, I let him leave. I didn't want to hurt. You know, I, I, I'm i a good guy. He's just, bro, shut up. Like, every normal human being, like, obviously, you're not trying to kill somebody. You're not being altruistic. You're just being, like, a normal human being. You should just call the cops. Like, why did I just call cops? I'm glad he didn't like attack me or try to do anything like that because I think there was a real chance I would have pulled that trigger um, and I did pull the trigger and that was the dumbest thing I've ever done out of all the stupid shit I've ever done I endangered the lives of myself of that person of my neighbors that bullet has to come down somewhere that you know, was an idiotic thing zone. for me to do and it's something I've lived with a tremendous amount of guilt and regret over this whole time and it's, it's just been something that's you know and I, I took my legal lumps and uh, I'm still suffering I spent $27,000 in legal fees to get my keep my out of jail because they wanted to throw the book at me to make a high profile case of like gun control at the end of the day I don't think the threat that Frank made was right and I definitely don't think him showing up on my I don't know if I believe that. I mean, maybe, but I, I mean, that's a little difficult to believe. It didn't really hit, even hit the media. Nobody really cared. But okay, maybe I'm wrong. My property was right. That said, I don't think me pulling the trigger was right. I don't think me threatening him on that podcast was right. And I don't think his initial uh, desire to come at me was right at all either to that degree. And I think that's have one of the reasons. I thought about that as like um, have an opportunity in retrospect to rehabilitate yourself. I have uh, quite a bit actually because of that. Uh, one of the very first. Mean? I think that, I mean, I don't know what you, I don't know what I could possibly do to win people. The people that are like, Frank was right. You deserve that. There's nothing I can do to bring those why people we, Well, why don't we know those people, right? you know, the more normie YouTube audience who probably saw that and thought it was, you know, for people to do that. Well, do my you? lawyer immediately told me after that to stop making content. And he was right to tell me that. And after that incident, he told me to lay as low as humanly possible. And I had already in my mind begun to retire. Like I'm done with YouTube. But I think, that, I think the reason why is because he thought that you would make it worse for yourself rather than the fear that someone else would do it. I think he was afraid that you would, you, that you would say something that would make you look bad or you would contradict yourself. Oh, that's what, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's exactly what my lawyer told me to do because yeah. I'm an idiot. Like my lawyer, <laughs> God bless him, Pine Dryer, uh, he knows me from back in the magic days. We've known each other for 25 years. He knows what an idiot I am. He's Why? seen me at my absolute worst stupidities, right? He's seen me when I was homeless. He's seen me when I was getting on disability. He saw me when I was at my absolute most miserable moments in life. And so his advice was lay low, shut the fuck up. Don't talk about it. Don't say that person's name ever again. Don't go on any podcast about it. And I'm like, this is a redemption tour for me. Like I, I, there's so many people taking my side. And he's like, do, do, is, it, is it good to have a YouTube career while you're in jail, Boogie? Because I'm trying to keep you out of jail. And he was right to do that, I think. Uh, I also started really intense therapy at the beginning of that year. Um, I was seeing somebody be a better help, but also uh, in person. Um, because better help tells you to they're like you should also uh, consult with like a, a, a therapist that you see in person and uh boy I bro mean, do you think that he's not actually seeing a real therapist he's just like looking on better help and that's why his uh he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about it seems like it's all fake you think that's what it is it's fucking wild made some progress after that for sure is um, good do you remember there was like a controversy with them a few years ago i will tell you that this Last year, I got assigned with the best therapist I've ever had. And I don't know if that speaks well of that therapist as much as it does the service. Because the service could still be 
Uh, I don't know. I just use it as a matchmaking system to get in contact with this one particular therapist, and that particular therapist works daily with. I, I don't really, I don't really trust their better help therapist to be honest with you, especially with the way that you're talking. I just, I don't even, I question if you're even going and seeing a therapist. Children who are abused survivors as children, and also at night works with adults who have been abused children. So he knew me like the back of my hand, and I got the best therapy I've ever. But as far had. as better help, you haven't. I thought there was some kind of service on it where you would talk to like, a therapist. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was doing. I was doing phone therapy once a week. You can do video therapy as well, and I think video therapy and phone therapy, especially during COVID, was just as valid as any other type of therapy uh because I, I wasn't willing to die getting therapy i wasn't willing to get a cold or get covid and fucking die from that okay. uh, my doctor okay. told me to be very careful about that but yeah no i think i think better yeah, help is a very good service depending on who you get matched with and i think that's therapy is like dating if people don't know that you absolutely need to get the right therapist who gets you and you get that therapist and if you don't you're not gonna have a good time with therapy. uh you uh, need yeah sure but there's also the side of it of like if you're not being an honest person uh, therapy is not going to work for you. That's one of the things about therapy is you need to be very upfront and honest about yourself. Uh, there are plenty of people who will just say what their therapist wants to hear and then their therapist will accept it because not everybody's a very good therapist. <laughs> uh, not all of them are particularly intelligent. But just based on the way he talks, I just I just don't believe that he's seeing an effective therapist or a therapist at all because he's justifying everything with bad behavior and now he has 15 different diagnoses and I just don't believe that he does. Um, I just don't believe it, you know, so it's possible that they're just diagnosing him for what I, I just want. I, I don't know. It's hard to believe that he has now his ADHD, uh, fucking autism and like 15,000 other things. Uh, it's far fetched to me to shop around therapy the same way you shop around data. How do you Especially considering how well he communicates with people. Like I just, <laughs> like, I just don't believe it. <laughs> He's just full of shit. Um, he justifies um, everything with mental health. When you see a video from someone like June the King or Christopher Tom or me, when you see when you see one of us drop a video documenting your stuff, how does that make you feel when you timeline? So when Christopher Tom made his first video, it was devastating for me. I was already suicidal, but boy, it hastened my timeline quite a bit. Uh, and I can't put that on that kid. That's on me, you know. Um, he took that mega thread and decided to make a video for it. And Three million people saw it and they believed all of this. Shit. And I was seeing that in my timeline, my comment section every day. You were abusive to your wife. You're a piece of shit. You're, you're all this other shit. terrible. Shit. I don't know if anybody called me right, but you know what I'm saying. And uh, it really leveled me. It, like it, it, it destroyed. Oh, why did you say uh, that? My mental health crumbled. When I saw your video, what? I just laughed. He's like, they call me a rapist, but I, well, nobody did that. But you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. Why would you say that if it wasn't true? Friday here, seven years later, it started that same path. I immediately started to collapse on myself. I'm like, oh my god, all this goodwill from the fight is going to evaporate. Um, people are going to go right back into believing these horrible things about me, some of which are true, some of which are not. And uh, I'm not going to be able to get my income back up. I'm not going to be able to, to 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 entertain people. I won't be able to help people. I won't be able to do the thing that I want to do here so desperately. And I'm very mad at Tom for choosing that. I'm mad that out of all the things Tom can make a video about today, why did he decide to sh on my particular parade? Uh, but it, it took me an hour or so to realize that that's a negative thought pattern. And that, as Keemstar said, it's just as good that people are just talking you as if they're talking positively about you um no, which not. you would rather have people talking about that's not a positive it's only a positive if you it's not a positive at all you shouldn't see that just from a pride perspective as being positive that people are shit talking you that's that's terminally online behavior um do something worth people actually talking positively of you like uh, i don't understand it sounds a cope both positively and negatively about me or people not talking at all. And I need people to watch my videos. I need people to check in on what I'm doing every once in a while. I want it. I need it. I have to have it. I need the income that comes from it. So uh, I try to take it as a good thing. And I try to turn it into a good opportunity. I like sitting down and talking with you today. And I think it's turned out to be a good opportunity. I think people are going to learn a lot about both of us during this podcast. And hopefully it'll be at least entertaining. I think posting this on my channel is going to do as much damage as good. Uh, but hopefully people will be entertained along the way. Have people um, giving you a lot of advice on YouTube? What they think you do? Like, I know YouTube friends have been like, don't do this. Oh, don't do that. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of frustrating for them. Take it or no? No, I, the same way, like my dietitian, my dietitian will set me down and be like, hey, if you eat, 1800 calories a day and it's mostly protein and you focus on the protein and the water macros you're gonna lose weight and i'm like yeah i know <laughs> but have i done that yet do i seem like the person that's so in control of the reading that i'll be able to do that and so when people are like hey. I mean, 1800 calories a day of mostly protein is just something that he's not going to adhere to it's he probably can eat more than 1800 calories and still lose weight i understand the idea of like a higher protein diet diet based on uh, the fact that of like the thermogenics of it and it'll burn more and i understand that and all but that sounds like a very restrictive diet calorie wise and food wise to the point where he's not going to adhere to it because it's too unrealistic so if you actually want a real like diet you should probably test your macros your, or not even your macros but test your calories yourself and just work on eating less instead of even eating better necessarily given his history of uh but mocha Hey, make better videos. I'm like, okay, well, how about I sprout fucking wings and fly? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, man. I just do what my brain tells me to do, and I try to function as a human. Um, people tell me, hey, don't interact with negative people, Tom. Don't do the podcast. You know, don't interview him. I did it anyway. I do what I do. Do you not think you about know? more like more free will than that? I mean, you said your brain tells you what to do, but don't you tell your brain and your body what to do? Like you have some. I'm learning. Choice. I'm learning. I'm learning. I, I think based on what I've learned in the last year of therapy, and I know everybody's gonna say, oh, poor victim boogie, but the truth of the matter is, when you live the first 18 years of your life in a war zone, it affects the person you're always going to be. When you wake up with a knife in you, when you wake up, when you get molested, when you get the shit beat out of you, when the parents who are supposed to take care of you and protect you and 
instead abuse you and use you, it affects the person you are and it always will. And that's just the reality of it. And so I, and nobody taught me the humans because like, I don't know if you're close to your parents, Tom. I don't know if they taught you how to drive. I don't know if they taught you how to pay a, a bill. I don't know if they loved you and hugged you. I don't know if they took you to the park. I don't know if they did that for you. But if they did, that shit didn't happen for me. I, the opposite of that shit happened. Nobody taught me. Sh I've had to learn it all. I had to figure uh, out. Trauma dumping. Relax. Okay. You're dumping all this shit onto a kid. It's a little weird. Relax a little bit. I'll joke, uh, on, like everything aside though, like it is a little bizarre that you're constantly talking about this. Uh, to not your ther talk to your therapist in a healthy way. Like you don't need to be talking about it every day. This is like some twenty-year-old kid that doesn't really know you, and you're sitting here tr like trauma dumping onto him. Like no, no offense, but and it's like Jesus Christ, and it's just going to cont contribute to whatever trauma you have as well. Anyway, so you're constantly making it public. You're constantly asking people to weigh in on it publicly. So just like stop. They're all out so, on my own. And I had to I'm learn sure. it in a way that works with this broken body and this broken brain. And um, this... so it, it's it's frustrating is because I am learning the things that I need oh, to learn, is. the skills that I need to learn. But I have That's a certain awesome. amount of arrested development that I've been struggling with for the entirety of my life. And I'm still struggling with it now. And I'll be honest with you, if this polycythemia shit doesn't kill me in 20 years, I'll still be struggling with it then. Uh, it's it's difficult when the demons that are in my skull are as loud as they are to not listen to them. Real fucking hard. But I do a pretty good job. I've never hurt another person, even though the people that, that hurt me, I've, I've never done that to another person. I, 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 I'm still alive, even though I had a voice in my head for the first 48 years telling me to blow my brains out i you know i i have exerted some free will but just not in areas that i think other people wish i would i think people want to see me lose the weight and i want that too i think people want to see me get better control of my anymore. faculties and my mental health and i would like that too i think people would like to see me create better content and i would like that too but my focus is almost always on just functioning as a human being and learning how to do that i still don't know how to do that and it's embarrassing and awful to admit that when you're a 48 year old man yeah. how do you do that that would, that, would Thanks, make, that would make me very happy, you know. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, at obviously, the end of the day, as someone who you know profits on your demise, obviously that doesn't sound that sounds a bit rich coming for me, but I genuinely, you know, I hope you can figure it out while, while we're here talking in person. You know, in yeah, person. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, and I've always known this. I think one of the reasons so many people are so angry about the person that I turned out to be is because they were very invested in seeing me be more successful than I've had in all of these areas. They wanted me to lose more weight. They wanted me to be a better YouTuber. They wanted me to be a better person. And I think you are one of those people. I think you would gladly like to see that, even if it meant you'd make slightly less money. You know. Uh. <laughs> This is just a weird thing to say. I'm sure some people do. It's weird that you'd assign it to him. I don't think that he really cares about you. And it also came off as a little passive aggressive saying, even if it makes less money for, even if you'd make less money, uh, I, I don't know, it kind of insinuates that the only reason he's popular is because, or a significant reason that he makes money is because of Boogie. It just comes off as passive aggressive and I don't have a positive framing of Boogie, so know um and i the story's not over yet and i'm still doing a lot of work and i'm still trying to get as much done as i can i think the window for like youtube fame is closed and that's okay uh i think i'm a, permanently a low cow and it'll always be that way and that's okay um, as it closed, i think that's a very defeatist way to look at it i've had times in my career where everyone said oh he's a low cow now he's a low cow can never come back you know i figured it out yeah i'd be done you know thank you I, you know, I did not expect to get hope from you today but that mm -hmm. is very helpful to me actually thank you I, yeah, at the end of the day, I, I, people... well stop acting like this and maybe you'll have a little bit of you'll get a little bit more uh <laughs> more of an issue uh, if you stop acting like this people might respect you more People don't respect you, Boogie. It's a problem. People think a lot of things about me, but I think if you make good content, it's and it's, and it's undeniably good. Well, I'll really tell you, watch. I, I have a few ideas. Tell me what you think about this, person to person. Um, I got $5,000 paid day coming. I got a $10,000 payday coming. And even though I had to spend about $11,000 out of savings, I could put that money back into savings, but let's be real. I got to put $3,000 aside from taxes. I had to borrow some money not too long ago from somebody, so I'm going to give that money back to them. Uh, and then on top of that, I uh, uh, by the time it's all said and done, this payday for this fight's about five grand. And I could just put that into savings or I could pay a couple of months for the mortgage. I think I want to go back to trying to create some really interesting content. And the interesting content that I want to do um, involves me getting back out of the world and doing some weight loss. Is that something you think you would personally? like to see no you shouldn't do that because you're gonna put your an expectation on yourself to lose weight for content and you're just not going to do it like you never do it's easier to lose the weight outside of it <clears throat> make different content that's not what you should be doing you're just gonna fail and nobody's gonna really care anymore so you think that's something you think an audience would like to see i think you could have done that a few years ago but i think now people are not invested in that for you know i would yeah. do that i would yeah. put the money in savings and then i would just try to make the best content you can with, with what you have and you have you know a good radio voice you have a good personality for stuff like that you you know you like interviewing people you like videos, I, guess. I would make content about that i would stop talking about drama i would start talking about video games and stuff like that people used to watch me for that all the time just do that you know why i stopped talking about video games is because i love video games and all of the news was so awful everything that was coming out this company's full of this this company's full of abusers this company well you don't have to do that you could you don't have to do that you could just review the video games <laughs> you don't have to do that you could literally you could literally go on a stream and you could play the games yourself on your stream and you could leave the stream up on youtube or upload it on youtube on like a let's play channel and then you can um just do like a little like here my first hour playing fart in my penis or you can make content like that like there's plenty of things that you could do you don't have to do that kind of content but okay 
is like is full of microtransactions. They, they said this. Don't you guys have phones? Like watching Diablo crumble, or watching Blizzard crumble, watching Ubisoft crumble, watching Bethesda crumble, watching these titans of the industry that I loved crumble in front Sounds of me like was an, so an heartbreaking. Excuse. It made me hate video games. I quit playing most games for a year, which is unheard of. For oh. me. Video games are my Netflix, right? Um, okay. I I couldn't stand to do that news anymore because it was just so heartbreaking to me. Do, do you deal with that at all when it comes to like? Is it wrong to call you a bit of a muckraker sometimes? Because that's the phrase I use to describe the com commentary community. Like yeah, sure. you look at human misery and you're like, let's prop up the human misery so everybody can stare. Sure, um, yeah. Does that sh get to you personally at all? Is there periods of times where you're like, the world's a shithole? That's a real passive aggressive kind of guy, huh? Jesus Christ, what are you, a woman? <laughs> but yeah, no, very passive aggressive. Sure, I guess. <sighs> Like, I hate it. Yeah, but I think I, I don't really see a reflection of that in my personal life, so it doesn't bother me that much. You know? Yeah, I think that's one of the worst things that I deal with is that I'm a ridiculously sensitive person. Uh, <sighs> I, I, I think it's partially like you do survive. But I think I, I think if I came into this world in the perfect scenario, I think I would probably be just a soft little... <laughs> I'm being honest with you, like my testosterone levels have always been so low and my estrogen levels have always been so high. It's a miracle that I function yeah, as a person. I am. I went back on it again. That's what gave me the polycythemia vera. Uh, so we had to go off of it for a while. But now I'm back on like the topical gel version and it doesn't work as good, but we had to get back on it for the fight and it's it's getting better. It's getting better. Why um, wouldn't you inject it? Wasn't that how you would take testosterone? I was able to build some muscle again. I actually can see an effect when I work out instead of just like feeling weak afterwards. Like I can actually see myself getting stronger and more mobile and stuff. So we're back on it. Um, I since since the yeah. Stuff, so what he's talking about is the, 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 he's the polycythemia vera. I believe is the cancer that he's talking about, where he produces too many blood red blood cells, makes your blood thicker. This can lead to strokes. So the biggest thing you'd have to do, uh, it's a rare blood cancer, but it's not. It's not necessarily like the terminal. <laughs> it's really not. I believe that the doctor said I might have this as well. And I was like, okay, whatever. I just didn't really, I mean, maybe I should, whatever. I don't care. Um, but it basically thickens the blood and you might have to take like blood thinners, which is, I mean, like I think Advil is a blood thinner. So, you know, you could, <laughs> man, I got to take, I got to take two Advils a day. Um, you know, so stuff doesn't run the risk of giving you polycythemia vera i'm mad that i wasn't always on it <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm very mad that i have a uh, blood disorder <laughs> because of the injection one but hey uh i'm glad you know I'm, at least i was able to function you know like when my doctor put me on the testosterone tom he's like well your muscles can't repair without enough testosterone in your body you need some testosterone and I'm like i don't care about my muscles man i barely use them he's like steve your heart's a muscle like you're a huge candidate for a heart attack let's make sure that your heart functions you have to do this so i felt like i mean we made the right decision at the time i could easily have a heart attack right I'm now i've uh, not gone on it but also it sucks that i had got the, the rare side effect but that just happens well i don't want to keep you too much longer but i gotta say is there any other things any of these other more contentious i will things? say god god bless turkey tom for fucking editing this down as you can tell because holy fuck is this like already long as it is i think we covered the stuff that i mostly want to talk about i mostly wanted to talk about the the abuse allegations because those aren't true and that one bothers me i did definitely want to talk about the swatting thing because i made my mistake there and i'm glad to cop to it um I, I i did definitely want to talk about the abuse allegations and why they hurt me so very much um i think i think i definitely give you a better understanding of the way my brain works and whether that's useful for you or not i hope it's useful to somebody out there who can relate to it and uh, hopefully they can do better than i did with that information like know that you're not alone and that okay. i've done a few good things if i can do a few good things maybe you can too um but is there any other any other big ones any other Shh. things that you're interested in <laughs> i didn't oh, know my wife was in here are you cool? yeah when i went to the when i went to the the, the blood uh, the blood and cancer specialist they said that there was like a thickness in my blood and i might have something like that i forget exactly what they called it and they said it's not like a bad like a horrible cancer or anything that's going to kill you it's just an increase in red blood cells something to do with my bone marrow i think too something like that um yeah and then i just whatever it is what it is so i didn't follow up <laughs> but <laughs> are you gonna yell at me when you get home now this is, sorry with me posting this or do you just want to post it uh channel? if it's okay can i edit it and post it and then you can post your version after give me a chance to get the most views and then you can post the unedited version i just want to do a professional version of it put it up on itunes give everybody a chance to listen and then you can follow it up is that something you're on itunes you didn't put it up on his actual youtube yeah that's fine sure yeah. yeah that'd be great man uh and god bless you man thank you for taking the time to do this man and i hopefully we'll get some people watching hopefully people get a better understanding of me and uh tom i'll be honest with you i know you're not a huge fan of me and that's okay but if you ever want to talk you ever want to bullshit you ever want to play a game you want to get to actually know each other so I, i'd be down for that man i uh you know if i can be friends with fortnite i've literally never played that I saw the color. You don't Fortnite. actually play Fortnite, do you? I do. I play Fortnite almost every day. That's so complicated to me. My brain can't keep up with that. Did you play uh, Tears of the Kingdom yet? Or you no, do play this type no, of game? I don't, I, don't, I don't like Nintendo. No. Yeah, that's more my style for sure. I cannot build and shoot. I can barely oh, shoot. I play, I play the no build one. So I just I play the shoot one only. All right, so. that I might have to try. Is it real? Like, do people actually have Rick and Morty and shit in like a regular it's game? It's real. God, that sounds awful. I have a friend. I met her down at um, Houston. She plays Fortnite. She's trying to get me to play with her. And I keep telling her no. Maybe maybe one day. Maybe one day. But one day. all right, man. Well, thank you, man, right, man, for taking the time to do this. I'll talk to you on Twitter. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I will speak with you again. Hey, man, thank you for that. I really appreciate it, dude. No worries, um, me on. Yeah, yeah. All right. I would love to do it any other time. You just want to come and it or something. You want to have me on your sh I'll be glad to do it. Uh, and thank you for making <sighs> like real content out of this. I, uh, my friend had me worried that it wouldn't happen.
happened, and I'm, I'm really glad we got real content out of it. What friend out of curiosity? I won't, I won't put it in the edit or whatever. But uh, here's the thing: if you told me something in private, even in private, I, I don't share it. And I yeah, he's pretending that he's like a nice guy that won't share information, even though he's constantly dropped his friend and even said he probably know who it is. So it's incredible stuff. Um, great. That's I, is someone we know, both know. It is. It's 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 someone that follows you. I can give you credit like that. I don't know if you Unless personally you know them. Star, maybe and maybe not. I, again, I would not say uh, <sighs> yeah, privately. I'm, I'm sorry, man. I just okay, the same way. I wouldn't. I wouldn't sell you out. I wouldn't sell anybody. You're else selling either. the person out as, as it is by hinting to them. So that's how it is, man. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, thanks for understanding, buddy. See you. Okay. Bye. Woo, we did it. Okay, we got through that.